Brothers and sisters, we thank the one God for his divine wisdom and his perfect understanding of all things. We thank him for the prophets. We thank him for the apostles. We thank him for the way of holiness revealed to his servants for our learning. Uh, we are grateful to God for all of you that are here this afternoon, you that were here last night that came back, and you that are here today for the first time. We thank God for you being present. We had a very good session last night. I'm grateful to all of you that had your questions and you were given answers from the scriptures. As I said last night, some of the ushers are passing around. You may see a notebook where you can put your name and address and how you can be contact. And that way we can put you on our mailing list, making you aware of whatever events that is coming up within First Church in different parts of the country. Uh, you can be, we'll send you a schedule of what's going on and also, if it be God will, we do, if it be the Lord's will, in the near uh, future, and that's by God's permission, I'm looking to open up a temple here in Camden because Camden is like a jungle and what God gave us to give them, they need. Uh, some said it's too many churches. Well, you can have all the churches you want. If you don't have the right stuff coming out of them, then what you got is not worth having. Amen. Uh, last night we had some, I was told, some Hebrew Israelites that came in almost when we was about to go. And some of the brothers was telling me that some of the guests was disputing with them outdoors and they were outside yelling and whatnot. Don't waste your time arguing with religion. Some may say, well, you do it. Well, I pretty much know what to do, how to do it, when to do it, and I know how to lay it to you. I know what scriptures to put on you. And brother, when I put a scripture on you, you're going to have a lifetime trying to come out of it. Amen. But I don't waste my time in actually argue with everyone because some really don't want answers. Some just want attention. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm telling you? Amen. And then there are those that are seekers of knowledge. And I do hope that's why you're here today because you want knowledge. Mm -hmm. That's greater and much better than what you've been getting. Uh, because as I encourage you over the telecast as I do all listeners throughout America and many parts of the foreign countries, that you should ask your preacher questions. You should never go to church, mosque, synagogue, or any religious temple just believing things on face value. You should question your teacher, question your so-called reverend, question your bishop, question your elder, question your so-called apostle or prophet or imam, question your teacher. If you are financially uh, supporting any religious order, then you have the right to question what the minister is teaching. Amen. If you don't question it, how do you know whether it's truth? And if you do question it, never let him give you an opinion for an answer. He must always take you to the book of truth, the scriptures. But one thing about the scriptures, men have strived through the years to discredit the scriptures. Amen. Why have men tried to discredit the book of scriptures? Because they know the scriptures are against them. Mm -hmm. And man hate the scriptures. Amen. Because whenever God tells us to do anything that we don't want to do, we have a tendency of getting very angry or very upset. That's why the millions of television viewers around the world, many of them get upset with me as if I wrote the Bible. Mm -hmm. Some cuss me out, call me all type of names. But strangely enough, they watch us every week. Mm -hmm. Cuss every week, watch us every week. Undoubtedly, some of you that are here now, when you first saw us, you was very upset, hmm. angry, and said some things that, well, I'm certainly, some of you wouldn't say to me now. Hmm. 
But it is common for people to speak evil of what they don't understand. Amen. And the book of scripture teaches us, in all thy getting, what should we get? Understanding. That's what I want to give you today, Camden. Camden. I want to give you a good understanding. Now, if you get mad, believe me, that's not my problem. Amen. My objective is to tell you what God said if you walk out of here cussing. That's right. If I see you walk out of here cussing, well, you're cussing at God. You're not cussing at me. Amen. If you get mad and say, well, I'm going to smoke my cigarettes, I'm going to drink my beer, regardless of what you say, leave it to me. I wouldn't care what you do. But I'm just a male man. Amen. Do you get upset with the male man because he gave you a $500 light bill? You better get upset with the electric company. That's right. His job is just bring the mail. Well, I got a book full of letters here. Amen. And I know it's a lot in there that hurt a lot of us. And many have gotten upset with me. But again, I'm just a mail man. I didn't write the book. The book is designed to hurt all of us. That's right. How many here never got hurt from the book? Never. Raise your hand and tell a lie. Go ahead. Everybody here get hurt from the book sometime. That's right. You know why? Because God has a high standard, don't he? Amen. I mean, consider this. The Lord our God has a very, very, very high standard. And the standard of God is in clear contradiction how we think, how we live, how we walk, how we talk. That's right. That's the way the standard of God is. Leave it to us. We will do what we want to do, go where we want to go, say what we want to say, do anything that pleases us. Amen. Because no man and no woman is born with the nature to please God. That's right. That's why the Lord our God says you must be born how? Again. 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 A new birth is instituted from God in order to change man's nature, change your thinking, change your way of walking. And once you consent to be transformed, you'll find yourself giving up the smoking and the drinking and the gambling and the whoremonging and the prostitution. Mm -hmm. You will be ashamed to walk the streets with your breasts out. Amen. And mini skirts on with the split from your ankle all the way up to your hip. You will be ashamed, brother, to go outside with shorts showing your cactus like legs. Amen. Yes, you'll be ashamed. That's right. Sister, you'll be ashamed to have something cut all the way down here, showing your breasts. You'll be ashamed. God gives you shame. That's right. God makes you ashamed in areas of life where you don't have none. Amen. And when God gives you shame, he also instills self-respect. That's right. Because a man and a woman that don't respect God is a man and a woman that don't respect self. Amen. If you want to know self, first learn God. That's right. Now, I know some of you is here who don't already went to church because most churches, they done already. <laughs> they done took your money and took you out. Amen. You know, went to church and you got your early revival feeling the choir sung something and you felt moved. That's right. Got a little teary-eyed and whatnot, and your Jerry Curl reverend got up and grunted a few times and threw his hands over his ears. I know. Amen. I know some of you snuck to your false church and then came here afterward. Hard head. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, don't go to church. That's right. <laughs> that is in the world today brothers and sisters mm -hmm. it is not designed to resurrect you from the dead Amen. I want to talk to you today from the second chapter of the book of Ephesians now again to you that are here for the first time uh, as I said last night you'll find the services here different from what you're used to because here you're allowed to ask questions you're allowed to raise your hands and stop me whenever I'm teaching. It doesn't have to be on any subject that you're presently working on, that I'm presently working on. Question me about what you are learning in your church. 
if you want to know whether it's truth or whether you want to know the preacher's lying to you. Don't you want to know whether you're being lied to or not? Amen. Talk back to me, Camden. That's right. You shouldn't want, you can't question your bishop. Hmm. You shouldn't want to know whether he's telling you the truth. Well, this is Bible school. This is Sunday school right here. Amen. It is not like what you're used to having and that club that you go to called church where you got a little paperback textbook and all these little classes. No, we got one textbook, the Bible, right here. That's right. And if you don't believe what's in here, you take your little paperback book and throw it in the trash. Amen. Now, you compare your worship, your worship that you're having in your church, whatever they got going on, let the guests come on in, brother. If they can't fit where the brothers are, get where the women are, just get them in here. Come on in here because we're going to have a good spa today, Camden. Amen. We're going to go toe to toe, eye to eye, nose to nose, kidney to kidney, chest to chest. I'm going to hit you hard. Amen. Because what you're getting is nothing but sugar. That's right. See, Camden, your churches that you go to, you know, the church that you've been going to for 5, 10, and 15 years, You've been getting a message from Sugar Daddy. Mm -hmm. And all he have is a congregation of sugar babies. Amen. That's why you can have the church and party at the same time. That's right. If you look at some of these preachers, they are rent their downstairs fellowship hall out to the community. And the community hold parties mm -hmm. in the church. Amen. The preacher is preaching upstairs and making money from his community party downstairs. Mm -hmm. Let's go to work. Now again, if you have any questions, raise your hands and stop me while I'm talking. I pick up any subject you want. Uh, someone done set up something real quick. They don't wait for me to get up here. They, they, they get me before I get up. All right, they got four questions here. Just come on in and make yourself comfortable. It doesn't matter where they sit at. Just get them on in. You can come on in, brothers and sisters, and make yourself comfortable. You don't have to separate them. Just get them in here. God will do the separating. Amen. Even if they come in with their second wife, let them both sit together in adultery. <laughs> I deal with them, God knows. <laughs> come on and sit comfortable for now. For now. Go ahead, you and your second wife can sit together for now. We'll let you sit together for now. You and your third husband, y'all can sit together for now. Amen. I'm going to kill you both before you leave here, guaranteed. <laughs> All right, now, uh, you can ask your questions by raising your hands, or if you want to, you can write them on a piece of paper or send them up, or there's brothers through the aisle with microphones. You can stop one of them, and they'll put the mic up to you, and uh, they'll get you that way. Before we get the mics, let me get the first question that I have in my hand, and uh, we'll get busy. All right, why should women keep their heads covered? Why? <laughs> Very good question. Amen. Let's go to work in the book of Scripture, 11 chapter of 1 Corinthians. I want to shoot and atomize everything with the Scripture. If I go too fast, raise your hands and stop me. Whenever you feel like it, raise your hands and stop me. That's right. I backtrack and go back chapter and verse again. Amen. The question is, why should women have their heads covered? Follow me and get me. Everybody all right? Good. All right, let's get busy. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and we'll begin reading in verse 5. Listen. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth, with her head uncovered, yeah. dishonoreth her head. Now, there's three words I want you to notice. Mm -hmm. In 11 chapter 1 Corinthians. Amen. Covered. Uncovered. Covering. That's right. Many of these dumb preachers, they often tell the women, your hair is your covering. Mm -hmm. Tell me what the word covering means. That's right. And this is why the preachers say, well... You're not wrong. You don't have to have nothing on your head and all that type of stuff. They don't understand what they're talking about. No. There's three words in 11 chapter 1 Corinthians that I want you to pay close attention to. Mm -hmm. Covering, uncovered, and covered. Covered. Listen good. 1 Corinthians 11, still in verse 5. What is it? But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered. What does she do? Dishonoreth her head. Now hold it. Every woman that pray or prophesy, pray or prophesy mean worship. That's right. If I'm praying or prophesying, I'm worshiping God. Mm -hmm. Let me give you a broader understanding of the term worship. Praise and worship is not narrowed down to going to some religious temple 
singing and clapping your hands. That's right. Worship truly come under one word, obedience. That's right. If you think worshiping God is just when you come to church and clap your hands and stomp your feet and roll on the floor like a roach being attacked, Amen. then you have a very sad understanding about worship. That's right. Worship come under one thing, That's right. obedience. Because Amen. even the animals, the fowls of the air, the beasts of the field, the insects of the world give God worship. That's right. When it snow, it give God's worship. It give God praise when it rain. That's Why? Right. Because it acts out of obedience amen so if a woman pray or prophesy having a head uncovered bare mm -hmm. bareheaded that's right what does she do dishonoreth her head who is the woman head but i would have you know listen in first corinthians 11 now at verse 3 what is it but i would have you know that the head of every man is christ the head of every man is christ and the head of the woman the head of the woman is the man get this that's right so when a woman wish up god with nothing on her hair and just have all her hair exposed, mm -hmm. she's dishonoring her head. That's right. She's dishonoring the man. The man. Now, when the Bible speak about, speak about dishonoring the man, it is not just nailed down to man on earth. That's right. But it's also dealing with man or angels, angels. which are in heaven. That's right. For the book says, for this cause. Mm -hmm. Listen. In Revelation chapter 21 and at verse 16. Uh, you better go to back to 1 Corinthians back, chapter 11. Back to 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and at verse 5. I show you how she dishonored the angels, which is also had the title man. Listen good. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered. What she do? Dishonoreth her head. And? For that is even all as if she were shaven. Listen. Amen. So if a woman don't have nothing on her hair when she wish up in God, God look at you as if you shaved all your hair off. That's right. He look at you as if you're a bald-headed woman. That's right. That's right. Because you're not giving him honor. Amen. That's why you see our women with their head covered. Now, a lot of people, when they first saw our telecast, they thought it was a bunch of Muslims, mm -hmm. which lets me know because they are not used to seeing people with their body covered. When Muslims first saw our telecast, they thought we were Muslims. And the many Muslims that wrote me from around the world said they thought we were Muslims because they couldn't believe they were looking at a church on television where you couldn't see the women's body. Amen. Because you know and I know that every church program that come on, the women are half naked. That's right. The women up on the choir half naked, backs all out, arms as bare from the shoulder down. That's right. And if they got a dress sometime, it's about the length of my jacket. And if it is long, a split is in it like someone is opening the curtain to a window. Amen. Even grandma got a split. Amen. Am I right? That's right. Grandma got a split. Amen. Come on, son, let's have it. But every woman that <laughs> prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, what happened? Dishonoreth her head. She dishonored the man. For that is even all as if she were shaved. Yes. For if the woman be not covered, if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. Let her also be shorn. But if it but be a shame, if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, then what? Let her be covered. Let her be See, covered. the Bible said it's a shame, shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven. Let you know she's not even allowed to cut her hair. That's right. She is to have that stuff covered. That's right. They got uh, some good questions here. I want to get all of them. Come on, son. For a man indeed ought not to cover his hair. All right, brother. When you wish up in God, you you wish up in God. You shouldn't be trying to pray with your head covered like you see the Jews do. That's right. And the Arabs do have a turban on and a Jew had a little bean on his head. No, when you're trying to pray, brother, with your head cover, you dishonor God. That's right. Did you hear what I said? For a man indeed a ought man not, indeed to, cover ought not to cover his head. For as much as he is as the image. As much as he is the reflection. And glory of God. And manifestation of God. But the woman. But the woman. Is the glory of the man. You hear this? That's right. Now, the Apostle Paul wasn't going around telling women to put hair on your head. No. Only time you do that, you got a wig. That's right. Are you listening to me, wig wearers? Amen. 
Are you listening? <laughs> Wig wearers. Amen. That goes for you too, fella, your toupee thing. That's right. You got your little paintbrush on your head. <laughs> Horse hair all Horse on hair. your head. Amen. <laughs> Come on, brother, let's have it. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. Yeah. For as much as he is the image and glory of God. What I look like coming in Camden. You see me on television, I always wear my hair low. And then when I come in Camden, I got a three or five inch afro. That's right. Don't you know, see my young brothers today want to do like they did in the 70s, mm -hmm. wear afros and long hair. Amen. Men, mm -hmm. you are forbidden. By scripture, by scripture to have long hair in first corinthians chapter 11 and verse 14 did you hear me men all men that's right are forbidden by scripture yes brother yes yes good <laughs> Right. Right. Uh but because there's not any that tell you how long Jesus' hair was. That's right. What what that the reason why they condemn you for shaving your hair because it is the nature of a man to fight the Bible. That's right. But as soon as the one that fight you for obeying the Bible humble himself, you'll find him doing the same thing That's that right. you've done. That's right. <clears throat> All right, let's finish getting this. First Corinthians chapter 11, we're at verse 14. All right, listen. Doeth not even nature itself. Doeth not you. nature itself. What you mean? Common sense. That's right. Teach you. That if a man. If a man. Have long hair. Have long hair. It is a shame. It's an embarrassment. Unto him. Shame. It's, a, it's disgusting. Disgusting. You see it on TBN though. Ponytail wearing men preachers. That's right. Men want to wear ponytails. That's right. Men want to wear two ponytails like Snoop Dogg. <laughs> That's Listen, right. When I came up. And if there was a man coming out the hood with ponytails, he was considered a faggot. Amen. Am I right, man? Amen. Now, Snoop Dogg's supposed to come from the hood. So that's it's not balancing out. A boy from the hood with bangs and a ponytail. That's right. We're truly living in the last days. That's right. You get what I'm telling you? Amen. You that got your hand up, we'll get to you in time enough. Just let me finish. Working on the questions that uh, Mike Douglas, raise your hand, Mike. Let me finish working on the questions that Brother Douglas sent up. Mm -hmm. So let's finish on the women covering their head. Come on, brother. Still now, First Corinthians chapter 11, now at verse 7. All right, Four. let's get the covering now. All right, verse 10. All right. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head. No, let's get the hair as the covering. Then I go back up to verse 10. At verse 15. It's the term covering that I want to explain. Amen. Listen. 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 15. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her. Why? For her hair is given her for a covering. Hold it. This is where the preachers use to say, well, women don't have to have nothing on their head because your hair is given to you for a covering. Covering and covert is two different things. That's right. Two different things. That's right. Now, the term covering means incomplete. Mm -hmm. It just says you women need to have children if you have daughters. And it's wintertime out there. Here's your daughter want to go outside and play and it's cold out there and the wind blowing. You tell your daughter, put something on your head, girl. It's cold out there. Mm -hmm. But she already got hair. She right. has a covering. That's but what right. you tell her, cover your hair. Put something on your head. You didn't tell her put hair on. That's right. Covering is an incomplete. If, up, if we have a temple here in Camden and all of us brothers get together and we lay in carpet and somebody say, what y'all doing? We are covering the floor. Mm -hmm. 
That means the floor is not covered. That's right. We are covering the floor. Come back in 15 minutes, we'll be done. All the floor is covered. So now we are not in the process of covering. It's not incomplete now. That's it's right. It's covered. It's complete. That's what covering means. Mm -hmm. Incomplete. That's right. So your hair is giving you for a, a covering, covering mm -hmm. but yet it's incomplete because you are still bareheaded. That's right. Listen. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to it her. It is a glory unto her. For her hair, her is, hair giving her is giving her for a covering. For a covering. Back up to verse 6. Now notice verse 6. For if the woman be not covered. If the woman be, notice the difference in the, in the term covering and covered. That's right. If the woman be not covered. Let her also be shorn. Then what? But if it be a shame. If it's a shame. For a woman to, to be, be shorn, shorn or, shaven, or shaven. Let her be covered. So when you have your hair covered it honored man here on earth but now let's take it up into heaven first corinthians 11 now at verse 10 listen for this cause ought the woman for this reason ought the woman to have power to have what head. power power where on her head because of what because of the angels so when you have your head covered you honor man on earth and you honor man in heaven angels That's bear right. the shape of man in revelation chapter 21 the angels of heaven bear the shape of of man. That's right. Listen to that revelation. Chapter 21, we'll begin in verse 16. What is it? And the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. Yes. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs. Uh -huh. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. Yes. And he measured the wall thereof. He measured the wall thereof. And 140 and four cubits. What was it? According to the measure of a man. According to the measure of a man and that, what is the man called that is of the angel so woman when you have your head covered you have you're showing honor and reverence to man on earth that's right and man which are the angels in heaven and in daniel chapter 9 and at verse 21 what is it gaze while i was speaking in prayer what did he say even the man gabriel what was the angel gabriel called even the man Gabriel. And it's the same Gabriel that came to Mary and told him about the conception of Christ. That's right. And what was Gabriel called? Even the man Gabriel. You see the angels bear the shape of men. So whenever mm -hmm. the women have your head covered, you honor man on earth and you show honor and respect to man in heaven. And if you don't cover your head, you disrespect, you disrespect and you dishonor mm -hmm. heaven and you disrespect and you dishonor Earth. Judging yourself. Judging yourself. Is it commonly? Is it common that a woman pray unto God uncovered? The Bible says you judge. That's right. Is it commonly that a woman pray unto God uncovered? Uncovered. All right. Let's get Brother Douglas' next question. Mm -hmm. Is it permissible for them to wear weaves and extensions? <laughs> no. 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 What's wrong with the way God made you? Amen. Why would you put on you what God didn't make? That's right. I see many of sisters throughout the world, some sisters, very dark skin, mm -hmm. go put on a blind wig. That's right. Like they got a high beam light on their head. That's right. Having weavings, hair extension, mm -hmm. false hair, God wants you to be the way he made you. For the Bible says in Leviticus chapter 10. And verse 10. And verse 10. Follow me in the scriptures. You see, I love to use all the word of God. All of it. That's all right. of it. That's right. Leviticus chapter 10 and verse 10. Then we get 1 Corinthians, or rather 1 John chapter 2 and uh, begin verse, at verse 14. Verse 14. Come on, son. In Leviticus chapter 10 and verse 10. Get and, this extension, wearers. And that ye may put difference. And you, that's unbelievable. I want you to get it also. That's right. Because now the, women, the men want to do what the men are doing. Amen. All right, get this. And that ye may put difference. Do what? Put difference. No, be the same. Put difference. Be the same. Put difference. Put a, give chapter and verse again. In Leviticus chapter 10 and Leviticus verse 10. Leviticus chapter 10 and verse 10. And that ye may put difference. Put a difference. Between holy. Between God's way. And unholy. And the way of the devil. And between unclean. Between what's unclean. And clean. Do you hear what the book says? That ye may put difference. If the scripture says if you are in Christ, you are a new creature, 
old things are pass away. Those wigs. That's right. Those hair extensions. Mm -hmm. That false ponytail. Amen. That false bang. That's right. That toupee. That's right. Do away with it. That's he right. He says, put a difference. Put difference. And then the Apostle John teaches us. First John chapter 2 and at verse 14. Do what? I've written, or at verse 15. All right. Love not the world. Love not the world. Neither the things. Neither the things. That are in the world. Well, God forbid his people to love the things that are in the world that's against God. If any man love the if world. If any man love what the world had to offer you. The love of the Father is not in the him. The love of God is not in you. How will God feel about the conduct of the world? For all. How much? All that is in the world. How much? All that is in the world. What did the Bible says about it? For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. That is what the flesh want. Hair that, extensions. That's right. Hair black extensions is brown. That's right. Hair gray. Just a minute, brother. Let me finish this up. Hair gray extensions black. Amen. What's wrong with the way God made you? That's right. God didn't make you with false hair and all that and you putting all these weavings in and amen trying to look in a way that god didn't make you look that's right don't even need contact lenses but they don't like the color of their eyes amen so they go put contact in lenses just to alter their color right one eye blue one eye stripe if that's you got right. stuck like that you'll be hunting down some crazy tv evangelist amen they try to slap his hand on you, they, con they get the contacts off. That's right. And you take note, the reason why you find so many of our young people today don't know what to do with their body, mm -hmm. because you allow yourself to be influenced by the media. Amen. Every time the media put out something, mm -hmm. they make it look uncivilized. God's people are supposed to be different from the sinner. That's right. But today, when you go in the church, you don't see no difference. No, no. You look just like the sinner. That's right. So the Bible says, put a difference. That's right. Between the clean unclean. and the unclean. And God saw everything. Listen. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 31. What? And God saw everything. Everything. That he had made. That who what? That he had made. God didn't make wigs. That's right. He had made. He saw everything that he made. And behold. Behold. It was very good. It was very good. God right. didn't make two pays and wigs and hair extensions and that's right a man is making that stuff amen you walk around with a horse's tail on your head and all that foolishness that's right be the way god made you that's it next question does it matter when i'm praying if i use the lord jesus or yeshua or which is hebrew mm -hmm. uh there is no j's in the hebrew language and hebrew the way you say the name Jesus in Hebrew is Hashua, which is mm -hmm. correct. Mm -hmm. The way you say the name Jesus in Arabic is Isa. Some pronounce it Esau. That's right. The way you say the name Jesus in a Hispanic community is Jesus. So if you use the term Hashua, which is Hebrew for Jesus, there is no violation of biblical principle. Mm -hmm. You're still saying the name Jesus, but you're just saying it in a different language. That's right. All right, the Bible says where there is no law, there is no transgression. transgression. Four, is music a weapon primarily used by Satan to draw believers away? Yes. Oh, yes. Without question. Oh, yes. Kirk Franklin. Now, we that came in the 70s, we came up in the funk era. Is that right, brothers and sisters? Amen. Let the funk say amen. Amen. <laughs> so we know what the funk music is like. Is that right? Amen. But to this generation who really don't know nothing about the funk, mm -hmm. they think Kirk Franklin is instituting a new music. Right. But he isn't. That's right. Because if you listen to Kirk Franklin music, he's simply taking the music that was played right. from former groups, change some of the rhythm a little, take some of the band section from Savannah Band or James Brown Band Group or Tower Power. That's right. Or Graham Central Station or Sly and the Family Stone. That's true. 
and just change the lyrics. That's right. And throw the name Jesus in there a few times. That's, That's exactly right. what the devil is doing. That's right. Now, if the scripture plainly teaches put a difference, difference between holy and unholy, mm -hmm. then no so-called Christian musician mm -hmm. music should be trying to pattern right. itself after a sinner. In Amos chapter 5. The rap came out. Mm -hmm. Rap been out for you young people that don't know it. Mm -hmm. I mean, the ink spots was rapping. Mm -hmm. It was just in a different rhythm. The Mills Brothers was rapping. Mm -hmm. It was just in a different rhythm. Ella Fitzgerald and all of them was rapping. Rapping is simply a group of words put together, rhyming in sync to a music. Right. That's all it is. Amen. But you look at today now, the so-called Christian. All the Shirley Caesar is. That's right. You got her trying. She went from hold my mule to trying to rap. Amen. Amen. You know why? Whatever way the so-called, the so-called Christian right. can make money. Mm -hmm. If the music is of God, then how can it be played on any station? Right. R&B, gospel, blues, rap. How can heavenly music be played on a, on a station that just plays strictly for partying and jamming? That's Something's right. wrong with that music. That's right. That's right. Something's wrong with that music. That's right. Now let's go to the book of Amos. Amos chapter 5 and we'll begin in verse 23. Listen. Take thou away from Listen me. Listen to what God said. Take thou away from me. God says take away from me the noise what do he call it 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 noise look at the church you go to amen where you got your choir that they're like a choir full of holes and gay men that's right half naked just they don't clap like they used to in the churches now amen now they throw a little flair to it <laughs> this is church church when you went to the party, everything was, here we go. Come, the church's doing it now. That's right. They used to say, throw your hands in the air, wave them like you don't. Church now do the same thing. A so-called Christian concert. That's right. The white brothers who supposed to be so-called white Christians, mm -hmm. who have their contemporary Christian music, mm -hmm. they got hard rock. Amen. Christian music. Amen. And when you go there, you can't understand them like you at a regular rock concert. That's right. <laughs> you don't understand what they say? I don't understand it. That's right. And then the so-called rappers who are supposed to be rapping for Christ. Mm -hmm. Imagine that. A Christian who come on the stage, mm -hmm. pants drop down, drawers pulled up. Bare chest is showing. Amen. With a cross round his neck and a microphone just walking around. Come on. Let's do it for Jesus. Come on. Let's do it for everybody's hurt. Hey, everybody's hurt. Hey, here we go. That's right. Amen. Am I right, I said? Go ahead. <laughs> Noise. Satan have used his lyrics, his rhythm, mm -hmm. and took the name of Jesus, just dropped it in there because he knew people who don't understand the name. Mm -hmm. Use his name to make money. That chant to that chant to the sound. Listen. In Amos chapter 6 and verse 5. Listen. That chant to the sound. That chant to the sound of the vial. Of the vile and invent to themselves and invent to themselves instruments of music instruments of music like David like David that's right huh that's right I, it's all in the book it's all in here that's they right. chant to themselves and they invent instruments mm -hmm. like David like David was a righteous man that danced before God that's right under the influence of God that's right. Now, when we came up, if you dance, go ahead, brother. When you dance in the spirit, go ahead. If you're dancing in the spirit, mm -hmm. you don't have physical movement like a dance in a party. That's right. That's right. But look at your churches now. Amen. 
This is no longer a pulpit. It's a stage for what is called praise dancers. That's right. That's and right. you go to a church that got that junk. Amen. You're not Christians. You're party goers. That's all. You ain't having nothing but a party. That's right. That's right. Praise dancers. That's right. Why don't you young folk just getting up there? That's right. That's right. Just gone. Amen. Put a difference. That's right. That's right. They and the reason, no difference. The reason why these international hustlers like T.D. Jakes, Creflo Dollar, mm -hmm. and these other liars mm -hmm. allow this stuff to go on in the churches because it bring in members and it bring in money and you don't see no change. It ain't nothing but a building with a steeple and a cross. Use the name Jesus for the front and you're still a Bible-toting sinner. That's right. Nothing more. That's right. You still party and still do what you used to do. That's true. Yes, the devil used music. That's right. You can see how the music has changed. Oh, yeah. The rap people have come along with their rap videos exploiting women. Mm -hmm. The so-called Christian done the same thing. Same thing. Rap videos, same steps. Mm -hmm. Kurt Franklin put out a rap video when he came out with that start. Amen. And you saw the young girls shaking their backsides. That's right. With shorts on. That's right. You can listen at the so-called Christian stations now. Mm -hmm. You got to make sure that it is one because <laughs> you can't tell. Can't tell. It's true. You don't know whether you listen to music and you ready to make love to somebody <laughs> or whether you ready to pick your feet up and start boogieing. That's right. Now, years ago, you could never do this to a true spiritual song. Spiritual song came on you. Was, throw that head to the side, double clap. Now, <clears throat> you almost. <laughs> Am I right? Go ahead. Go ahead. You don't, you don't know whether to move or groove. That's right. Even old folks trying it. Amen. So yes, Brother Mike Douglas, mm -hmm. the devil have used music as a subtle tool That's right. to keep you away from God and keep you from coming to God. Amen. And every musician that have participated in inventing this music to make it supposed to be like unto David, That's right. got a practice. See, Satan is subtle. Okay. He's not called a serpent for nothing. Mm -hmm. So Satan bring what the people love to hear and do to lure them away from God. That's why so many of our young brothers who th think they're Christians mm -hmm. going through these churches and they're part of a praise dancing group. Right. You're part of a, you ain't nothing but a little party group. That's all. That's all that is. That's right. All right, let's start to get the questions with the hands. Uh, all right, Brother Judah. Let's get the first one back there. This is a question about marriage and divorce. Yes. Why does a person have to wait till his, par his marriage partner dies until uh, he can marry again? I didn't get that question. What was it again? Why would a, a certain, you know, a marriage, your marriage partner has to wait till one dies in order to, for it to be right to marry again? Why? Because God said so. 7 chapter 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. I tell you why, because that's the way God planned it. Mm -hmm. You see, we plan and God planned, but God is the best of planners. Yeah, and God plan just have a tendency of outweighing ours all the time. That's right. The reason why you got to wait till someone kill over, die, kick the bucket, croak, mm -hmm. because that's the way God ordered it. First Corinthians You know what the seven. preacher said when you was at the altar till death do your part. Amen. Till, isn't that what he said? That's right. If the preacher don't mean it, then why would he say it? That's right. All right, listen to what God says it now. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and at verse 39. Yeah. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband is alive. But if her husband be dead. If her husband is what? Be dead. If her husband is what, folk? Be dead. What? 
Dead. Talk to me, Jersey. Dead. You can talk to me better than that. Dead. Amen. If the husband be dead. But if her husband be dead. Be dead. She is at liberty to be married then to whom she's she will. Free. To be married to whom she will. Only in the Lord. Only in the Lord. That's right. You better give me at verse 1. Let's get all of that. At verse 1. I just don't want to get the key point. I want to get all of it. 1 Corinthians 7, we'll begin at verse no, 1. Romans chapter 7, begin at verse 1. Romans chapter 7, we'll begin reading at the very first verse. Listen at this real good. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. Yes. How that the law hath dominion over man as long as he liveth. All right. For the woman which hath an husband. The woman that hath a husband. Is bound by the law to her husband. And. So long as he liveth. Then what? But if the husband be dead. If the husband be dead. She is loosed from the law of her husband. Now, if I die. My wife is a free woman. She okay. ain't free long as I'm living. That's right. Long as I'm alive, I got her in bound. Amen. Prison. Lockdown. Mm -hmm. Solitary confinement. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? That's right. And I don't mind and she don't mind it being that way. Amen. But if I die, mm -hmm. she's free. Free. She can marry again. That's right. Not that she will. <laughs> But if she do, that's her right. That's right. Because God gave her that right. But if the husband be dead. If I'm dead. She is loosed from the if law. If your husband is dead, then and only then you are loose from the law. Of her husband. Of her husband. So then if. Listen at this now. So then so if. So then if. While her husband is alive. While lives, your husband is alive. She be read, married. Read that part slow. So then if. So then if. While. While. Her husband. Her husband. Liveth. Is still alive. She. And she. She is married to another man. To another man, she, what is she called? She shall be called an adulteress. But she says she's a Christian. An adulteress. But she's on the choir. She shall be called an adulteress. So if you got another husband or another wife while your first wife and first husband is alive, you are living in adultery. adultery. Because God law did not plan for you to get an extra piece of meat. That's right. You can't get no turkey until your chicken dies. That's right. I you listen to the old man. That's right. So that's why it's that way, brother, hey. because God established it that way. That's right. All right, listen at this. In the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 23. Listen at the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 23. And at verse 18. And verse 18. A man. Uh-oh. A man. That breaketh. That break. Wedlock. Wedlock. Saying thus in his heart. Saying thus in his heart. Who seeth me? Who see me? I am compassed about with darkness. I'm, I got my second wife in secret. I had a little private where no one see me. The walls covered me. The walls covered me. And nobody seeth me. Nobody see me with my second wife. What need I to fear? What should I be scared of? The Most High will not remember my oh, sins. God won't remember me getting my second wife. That's the way that man thinks. Such a man only. Such a man only. Feareth the eyes of men. He only feareth the eyes of men. And knoweth not that the eyes of the Lord are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. When you got a second wife or a second husband, even if you have that way and done in secret. That's right. You were worried about people seeing you. That's right. But you forgot the eyes of God is 10,000 times brighter than the sun that shines today. That's right. Thus shall it also go with the wife. That what? That Thus same law applied to the wife. As in case I got any, any old women here who've been in their second marriage for the last 35 or 40 years. That's right. The one thing about the devil, he binds that second marriage tight. Amen. Oh, but I, I, he, look at the house I got, Pastor Jennings. I would never get a house like this if I haven't met Fred. That's right. <laughs> Fred is dead. Amen. So they start focusing on what Fred done for. Right. The house, the car, the bank account, the clothing, the mink, the fox, the dog, the skunk, the rabbit. That's right. All the name brand garments that he gave her. Amen. But you gather those things not by right. That's right. And the book says, he that gathered riches not by right dies a fool. Okay. See, this is God's law. Mm -hmm. It don't have nothing to do with Pastor Jenny's church belief. No, it I don't have a church. That's right. It's not my church. This is the laws of God. That's right. 
And the reason why the world is in the condition that it's in because they have took God's law and pushed it aside. That's right. Listen. Thus shall it also go with the wife. Also for the wife. That leaveth her husband. That leave her husband. And bringeth in an heir by another. For first. Amen. Also go for the wife. That's right. That bring in an heir by who? By another. That means the wife then left her husband and got pregnant by another man. Right. And that pregnancy is an heir by another. Who was the other? The other man. She's pregnant by another man, not by her husband. That's right. Uh -huh. For first. For first. She has disobeyed the law of the Most High. What? For first. All right, woman. That's right. You got pregnant by a man that's not your husband, and your first husband is alive. For first, what did you do? She has disobeyed the you law. Are, you have disobeyed the law of the Most High of God. That's right. And secondly, Se what something else you got? And secondly, secondly, she has trespassed against her own husband. And thirdly, <laughs> Amen. Secondly. Secondly, first, what happened to her first? She has disobeyed the law of the Most High. And secondly, she has trespassed against her own husband. Thirdly, she has played the whore in adultery. She done what? She has played the whore in adultery and brought children by another man. Woo! Amen. Do you hear that? And thirdly, you can't blame this stuff on me. No, no. You trespass God, you dishonor your husband, and then God call you a hoe. That's right. That's what God said. She has played the whore in adultery. And God call you an adulterous hoe. That's right. Huh? That's right. Huh? That's right. Huh? Amen. What did he say? She has played the whore in adultery. You have played, you was playing. <laughs> huh? Huh? That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Your second marriage is a game. That's right. That's what God is talking. That's right. Your second marriage is a game. You're playing. She has played. Go back and get the first thing. For first. Listen. For first. Listen, Camden. For first. And God don't need to get upset now. This is what you hear. That's right. This is what God got for you. Amen. My God, if you thought I was in person any different than what you see on television, you were sadly mistaken. That's right. My God, we only hit you on television. You only get about what? An hour worth? About an hour. My God, I want to give you such a belly full of the day and make you burp when you leave here. Amen. <laughs> because remarriage and divorce is tearing up homes across the world. Yes, it is. All across the world. And one of the reasons why remarriage and divorce is making a mess everywhere because most people are getting married without having a God sent man giving that woman counsel and giving that man counsel. That's right. You just got some dumb preacher when you walk in his office. Hey, Reverend, I want to get married. Congratulations. 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 Why he shouldn't meet with that woman one on one. He shouldn't meet with that man one on one. Then meet with both of them together and catechize them the same way when they're together. When he did, when they was one on one to see who's going to lie first. That's right. I do, you see, now by law, you don't have to get a blood test. Mm -hmm. My God, you follow Pastor Jennings, brother. We demand you get one. Amen. That way, sister, you ain't marrying a walking crab. That's right. Am I right? Amen. Amen. You don't want to become a syphilis. No, no. And gonorrhea. That's herpes. Right. That's right. The reason why I grill that man one on one to make sure you ain't marrying somebody on the down low. That's right. That's right. I believe that woman should know what she's marrying. Amen. And I believe that man should know what he's marrying. Amen. You don't want to come home, woman, and you find your man, my God, trying to lay with your own son. My Lord. That's right. Someone said, I lay my Bible down. No, I pick my Bible up and beat you with it. Amen. But this is how bad things are. It's not like it was 30 and 40 years ago. Oh, no.
All right, come on, let's, get, let's finish up this. Don't worry, we'll get you. Let's finish up more of this. Come on. For first, she hath disobeyed the law of the Most you High. disobeyed the law of the Most High. And secondly, she hath trespassed against you her trespassed own against husband. against your own husband. And thirdly, thirdly, she hath played the whore in adultery. You played like a hoe in adultery. And brought children by and another man. And brought children by another man. She shall be brought out. She shall be brought out. Into the congregation. And the congregation. And inquisition shall be made. And you're going to be put on trial. Of her children. Do you see how strict the law of God is? Amen. What else? Her children shall not take root. Her branches shall bring forth no fruit. You hear this? Amen. This is how strict the law is about adultery. That's right. And having, uh, not waiting until your wife die or your husband die. See, All right. Let's get the next one. Come on, brother. Another question about marriage and divorce. She wants to ask. Um, I was just going to say far as when you say that um, they have to be dead, could they be mentally dead of the way of God and you can move on or no? Repeat that question. Uh, Judith, if you heard it, repeat it for me. Can they be mentally dead in the way of God? Can they be mentally gay? <laughs> <laughs> or, or consciously dead? Unconsciously gay? Hmm. Consciously dead. Like they're dead. Con either you're gay or you're not. Mm -hmm. Dead, dead. Oh, dead. Dead. Consciously dead. Dead. No. No. The dead that the Bible is talking about graveyard. Graveyard. Cemetery. That's right. No life. That's right. No breath. Amen. They don't exist among the land of the living any longer. That's right. Consciously dead, what preachers talk about is when you're in sin. Mm -hmm. No, because I'm going to show you in the Bible where a saint married to a sinner. To a sinner. Give me the seventh chapter of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, we'll begin at verse 10. Listen at this. And unto the married I command. Unto the married I command, yet not I but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband. But what? But and if she depart. Now. If she depart. Let her remain unmarried. Yes. Or be reconciled to her husband. Now the Bible talk about. The woman is married to the unbelieving. But to the rest speak I, the not rest the Lord. Speak I, not the Lord. If any brother hath if, a wife. When it says brother, it's talking about a man that's in the church. That's right. If a brother have a wife. That believeth not. That's an unbeliever. An unbeliever is a sinner. And she be pleased. She, that unbelieving wife is a sinner. Someone that's dead in sin. That's right. Listen. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, yes. and she be pleased to dwell with him, what? Let him not put her away. No, let him leave the sinner and go ahead and get a Christian woman. Let him not put her away. No, leave the sinner or get a Christian woman. That's what the preachers are teaching. That's right. That's what these lying preachers are teaching now, that if one of you is saved and one of you are not, you can divorce the sinner and get you a Christian husband or a Christian wife. Liar! That's right. Lied. You was a liar. Amen. If you follow in a church that teaches you, go to a false church. That's and right. your pastor is a liar. Amen. If you are a pastor here and teach it, use a liar. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? If any brother has a wife that believes any brother, not, if any brother any got brother. a wife that's an unbeliever, and if she, any brother got a wife that's a sinner, and she be pleased to dwell and with she him, want to stay with you, let him don't you put her away, not put her away. What? And the woman which has and a the husband, woman that got a husband that believeth not, and he's a sinner, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. Don't you go leaving him either. That's right. And go to that man, you know, God gave you to me. My husband is a sinner. And I prayed to God for a same Christian man. Amen. And I met you, James. Oh, seek a Messiah, got to get a Honda. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You're nothing but a church going hoe. That's it. That's right. You're not free to get another man or another woman until the first wife, first husband dies. Dies. Amen. That's God's law. That's right. So oh, then take if God and every preacher try to change it, they're going to suffer that fire of hell as a penalty. That's right. All right, next question. Question about cremation. What's that? It's a question about cremation. Being cremated. All right. Yes, I just wanted to know, um, I heard something about um, Catholics have a problem with people being creation. What does the Holy Scripture say about cremation? Is it wrong? The book of scripture says where there is no law, 
There is no transgression, which means this. If there is no law against a thing, then I don't have the right to make that thing wrong. There is no law against cremation. If you want to get burnt up while you're here, fine. Just make sure you don't go to hell afterwards. That's right. That's my concern. My concern is keep you out of hell. Amen. You want to get cremated, be my guest. <laughs> but remember, when you're cremated, those ashes come back together. At the day of judgment, every ash come back together to formulate that same man and same woman so they can stand before the judgment seat of God. That's right. All right, next question. Question about hair. Yeah, sorry to backtrack you, but was, was not Samson strengthened his hair? Yes, back in the Old Testament, Samson's strength, it was in his hair. And he was called a Nazarite. Nazarite. Now, let me explain to you about the law of Nazarite in the Old Testament. Numbers, you better give me the book of Numbers so I can take it apart and strip it down. Let's have it. Numbers chapter 6 and at verse 1. Listen. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying. Now, you got to remember, you're dealing back on the Moses law. That's right. Jesus came here and the Bible said, one greater than Moses is here. That's right. Huh? That's right. Listen. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying. And? Speak unto the children of Israel. And say unto them, when either a man or woman shall separate themselves to vow a vow of a Nazarite, what happened? to separate themselves unto the Lord, yeah. he shall separate himself from wine and strong drink. It says when they do it. When. Which lets you know this separation is temporarily here. That's right. All right. He shall separate himself from wine and strong drink. And? And shall drink no vinegar of wine uh -huh. or vinegar of strong drink. Uh -huh. Neither shall he drink any liquor of grapes nor eat moist grapes or dry. Uh -huh. All the days of his separation. All the days of his separation mean during the period of time that he's separated, these are the things he must obligated to perform all the days of his separation while he separated shall he eat nothing that is made of the vine tree, and from the kernels even to the husk and all the days of the vow of his separation yes there shall no razor come upon his head and until until the days be fulfilled see samson was a nazarite he was under that law right so when you was a nazarite under the law and when your days of under the Nazarite was fulfilled under that vow when those days passed then you could go and eat the things that you was abstaining from and the raisin was able to go upon your head and cut your hair after the Nazarite law was fulfilled in your life That's so right. back in the Old Testament back in the Old Testament time when Samson uh, was a Nazarite he was under a temporary vow That's right. our strength is not in our hair now no, our no. strength is within our body which is the power of God wow. God is greater than some hair on our head That's right. I will want strength in my my hair. Oh no. Uh -uh, not at all. Not at all. Because now if strength is in your hair justifiable today, it will contradict what Paul laid down for us that is a shame mm, for, for a man, a man to have, have long hair. hair. So right. I'm not obligated by the Old Testament law that God gave Moses in the form of being a Nazarite by uh, letting my hair go long. That's but right. now it's a shame for me to have long hair. If I got locks in my hair, God command me to cut it. Cut him. That's right. All right. Next question. Yeah, my question is, I know when Deuteron Deuteronomy talks about a woman that's supposed to wear anything that pertains to a man. Yeah. But how can we use the Bible to determine what was worn back then to determine, you know, what's man or woman clothes now? Uh, well, number one, back then, it had to be a distinguished between men's apparel and women's apparel, even for it to even be taught. Because if you had men's apparel back there and you had men's apparel back then and yet the scripture is going to say for a woman not to wear that which pertained to a man, obviously it was a distinction. Right. Even back in those days from what women wear and what men wear. I travel to many foreign countries in the world and every foreign country I go to, you can see the distinguish between men's apparel and women's apparel. So in order, so uh, when I go to foreign country, I got to be able to utilize that scripture. Right. And every foreign country I go in, but for me to do that properly, I got to have knowledge. What is men's apparel in this country? Right. What is women's apparel in this country? I go to the Philippines. What is men's apparel there? I go to Australia. What is men's apparel? I go to Bangkok. I go to any place. Wherever I go, I must be able to take that same scripture. That's right. Because what may be men's apparel there may not be the same apparel somewhere else. Right. So yes, they got to be a distinguish. That's right. All right. Next question. Pastor, I have a couple of questions. I'm going to just give you one. All right. all right. I'll be here all day. Uh, can you explain to me um, the scripture? I, I see a lot of people wearing tattoos. Yeah. And I understand. Uh, I, when it, when I, it, it makes me upset when I see t um, scripture written, written on your body. And um, I just want you to explain that a little bit if you can. And tell us where it says that it's okay to, to um, write scriptures on our body. I don't see it. All right. You know? 
That's one question. Putting scriptures on your body don't mean nothing. If you ain't going to obey the book, if you ain't going to obey the book, you're going to have the Bible printed all over your head. That's true. What does that prove? That's all right, right, let's get tattooing and see is it in the Bible. In Leviticus chapter 19. All right, let's get it. In Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 28. This is for all of you that didn't get, didn't get your ink. That's right. Now you don't have to get your ink. Amen. And you that did get your ink and didn't know better, well, now you don't have to go get no more. That's right. Listen at this. In Leviticus 19 and verse 28. All right. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the day. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for who? For the day. Then the Bible said the sting of death is sin. So when the Bible said don't make no cuttings in your flesh for the dead, it's meaning don't put no f cuttings or no printing in your flesh on behalf of sin. No print. No print. That's what, that's what tattooing is. That's right. It's printing. That's right. You're getting your ink. It's a form of printing. That's One right. method of tattooing they have in prison is they take urine hmm. and they take the heel and the sole of many of the shoes that are rubber, cut it, hmm. melt it down to a liquid, mix with urine, and they make a homemade needle hmm. and pierce the skin. Now tattooing had become an art, a art of the devil. That's right. Anytime something come along that contradict God, then it's of the devil. Amen. Listen. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh Ye for the day. Ye shall devil. not do what? Not make any not cuttings. Not make any, any. any that cuttings. goes for folks that try to put scriptures. Any. Any cuttings. Any cuttings in your flesh. For the day. For sin. Nor print. Nor print. Any marks. Any marks. Upon you. Upon you. I am the Lord. Who said it? I am the Lord. Who said it? The Lord. No, no tattooing, no ink, no ink, none of it. That's right. All right. Uh, this question, Pastor, is uh, are we supposed to want nice things in this life? Uh, cars, house, clothing, etc. And the second part of the question was... Let's get the first question first. What is it? Okay. Are we supposed to want nice things in this life? Cars, uh, houses, clothing, etc. Materialistic. Now it is nothing wrong with wanting nice things. The Bible is not against you wanting nice things. No. And in fact, let's get the book of Corinthians and see what the wife will want. That's right. Huh? That's right. <laughs> I show you in the book of Corinthians what the wife will want, how she will mind the things of the world to please the husband. That's right. How the husband will mind the things of the world to please the wife. That's right. Listen at this. First Corinthians chapter 7 and at verse 28. Yeah. But and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. If you marry, you haven't broke no law. And if a virgin marry, she hath not sinned. Yeah. Nevertheless, such Nevertheless, are trouble in the flesh. Yes. But I spare you. Uh-huh. Now, get this. Verse Warning 31. nice. What's that? Verse 31. All right, let's get this real quick. And they that use this world is not abusing it. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. See, warning nice things is one thing. Abusing what you want is another. That's right. I can buy a nice car, go buy a Maserati, go buy a, a Bentley, and use it correctly. Right. But if I abuse it, I'm going to let my windows down, blast my radio, That's right. and go pick up some holes. <laughs> That's right. Abusing it. Just sitting down. <laughs> Have you ever been at a red light and they shaking your car? <laughs> it's, that's abusing it. That's right. So it's not a sin of one nice thing. Listen clearly to what the book says. Still in 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 31. Yeah. And they that use this world as not abusing it. They that use this world as not abusing abusing it use it if you able to afford a big house that's your business if, if your if your living room is this big you haven't broke no commandment that's right the sin is when this living room have you you don't have it that's right you so caught up in your big house and so caught up in your big car and so caught up in your suits and caught up in your dress and now you're thinking more than what you are that's right they that use this word you brag because you got a gold toilet all you can do is sit. That's all. Your toilet paper was imported from India. You use Campbell's hair. Oh my God. <laughs> Wouldn't you be in the itchy stage? Amen. Do you understand? That's right. This is like I teach my young brothers in the hood and out. Why in the world will you spend forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars for a car and you living in a project? Does that make sense? Amen. Why in the world will you spend forty and fifty and sixty thousand dollars for a car and you living in a project? Amen. You're gonna buy a used car for four thousand. Fine. Mm -hmm. And spend 
$8,000 for rims. Why I use a fool. That's a fool. Today, young people are more concerned about a car than they are their own roof. Your house can be leaking. You got pans all around. That's right. You must come out there and clean your car before you fix the roof of your house. Amen. Before you go buy an expensive car, put a decent roof over your head first. Amen. Is that right? That's right. Listen at this good. And they that use this world as not, not abusing it. For the fashion of this world. For the fashion of this world. Passeth away. Now, there's no need to get caught up in no fashion and no style because they come and go. Right. All of us that, come, that was raised up in the 70s, the 70s is back again, isn't it? Amen. The platform shoes, the same pictures <laughs> that the young people used to look at in their parents' photo album. They used to laugh about. Now they want them. Back then they had low riding jeans, but they, a lot of times they was called hipsters. Right. But they were still cut low. That's right. The bell bottom pants. Mm -hmm. They got all that stuff back now. I even got the tie dye shirts back. Amen. So all this is back now. So they all caught up in these fashions. fashions. But the fashions come and the fashions go. That's Next right. question. Go ahead, brother. Uh, the second part is, is Jesus an inherited name? Yes, it is. When you inherited something, that means it's passed down. Give me the first chapter of the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 1 and at verse 4. Yeah. Being made so much better than Being angels. made. God is not made. That's right. But the Son of Man or the Messiah, that's made. The that's flesh right. of Christ. Mm -hmm. That body of flesh and blood that was conceived by the eternal God from the house of David out of the tribe of Judah. Amen. Being made so much better than the angels. As he hath by inheritance. As he hath by inheritance. Obtained. Obtained. A more excellent, a more name, excellent than name than the angels. So if you take note, where did the Son of Man obtain this name from? From the eternal God, master of all creation. That's why he said, I come in my Father's name. That's right. So yes, the name of Jesus is an inherited name. Yes, brother. The last part is who wrote Genesis? And this is by Sister Kira. Who wrote Genesis? I don't know. History says that Moses wrote the five books. The scriptures doesn't say who wrote it. History says Moses wrote it. The scriptures doesn't say who wrote it. So I can't tell you who wrote it, but I can tell you the scriptures are true. That's right. The Bible said, I show thee that which is noted in the scriptures of truth. All right, let me get someone I didn't get. Pastor, Pastor, yes, Gen Pastor Jennings, on the uh, thing about men wearing the earrings in the ear, you have a scripture for that? Sure, I do. Oh, sure. Thank I you. <laughs> I get earrings on your ear and rings on your finger and necklaces around your neck and bracelets on your arm. In That's fact, right. I just get all of it while I'm doing it. That's right. Isaiah chapter 3. And begin reading at verse 18. Give me Isaiah chapter 3, begin at verse 18. Then give me Jeremiah 4.30. Then give me 1 Corinthians chapter 14, if I'm correct. Then give me the book of Timothy. And again, give me the book of Peter. That's right. Can you get all that? Amen. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's get busy. Uh, first in Isaiah Everybody all right? Yeah. Amen. All right. Don't, don't go to church tonight. <laughs> That's right. Don't go to your false church tonight. You'll get more in this session than all the years you've been going to church. That's true. Let's have it. First in Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 18. Read quick. In that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of the tinkling ornaments about their feet. Come on, tinkling I, ornaments about what? About their feet. Now they're wearing rings on their toes. That's right. What's the matter with you? That's right. These people don't know what to do with themselves. You're wearing rings on your toes. Your toes. Why? Amen. Why? Amen. Well, I want to feel like that I'm in Africa. <laughs> That's right. A ring on your toe make you feel like you're in Africa? Lord. Then just put a pole through your nose then. That's right. Every time the devil come out with something. You get someone that's prominent. Do something. Everybody wants to do it. Amen. Come on, read fast. In that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet. Run quick. And their cars Run quick. and their round tires like the moon. What else? The chain. What? The chain. What do they got round in that? The chain. What they got round in that? The chain. What they got round in that? The chain. What is a cross? Chains. Silver. Chains. Girlfriend gave it to me. Chains. What is it? Chains. What else? And the bracelets. What? And the bracelets. Boyfriend gave it to her. And the bracelets. What else? And the muffler. Come on. The bonnet. Quick. 
and the ornaments of the lace. Ankle chains. That's right. I said last night, if you're not a host, stop wearing the labels one. Get the ankle chain off your legs. Amen. What else? And the headband. What else? And the tablet. What else? And the earrings. What? And the earrings. All right, brothers. Earrings. Men. Men. Women. That's right. The holy book says what? And the earrings. <laughs> I don't care what the words say. These things are diamonds. That's right. Again, I said, don't, go, don't go fussing with me. The Lord will take away. Don't go fussing with me. That's right. You want to disobey God and then let God put you in hell? You take it up with God. That's I'm right. I'm just going to tell you, earring lover. Amen. Tell God what you're not going to do. That's right. Don't tell you get upset with me. I wear my earrings all I want. You don't tell me about Don't go snaking out on me. Amen. And you, fella, what's the matter with you? Right. I'm going to wear earrings in your ears so your ears can jingle. <laughs> That's right. Hmm? Amen. Listen. And the earrings. Earrings. The rings. Engagement. The rings. High school. Rings. Military. Rings. Wedding. Rings. You mean to tell me? I don't mean to tell you nothing. It's in your Bible. In Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 20. That wedding band ain't made you faithful. No, no. A wedding band ain't never made no man or no woman faithful. That's right. God said he's going to take them away. Take God away. said it. Not Pastor Jennings. God said it. The Lord will take away the rings. I look at these men still trying to pay off a ring for 20 years. <laughs> That's right. 20 years. Amen. Trying to pay off something the size of a lightsaber. <laughs> Well, I want a ring. I want everybody to know he's my man. That don't tell them women that he's your man. No, no. If he can't tell them, then that ring ain't going to do nothing. That's right. That's right. That ring ain't going to tell that man she's your woman. No, no. She'll have a ring on her toe and her toes up in the air with another man. My Lord. Moving the toes around. My Lord. Am I right? Amen. Go ahead. I want to hit you real hit you. good. Okay. You know I'm telling the truth. Amen. You may not like what I'm saying, but you know it's the truth. That's right. A wedding band ain't never made no one faithful since you've been born into this world. Amen. Go ahead. Go Come ahead. on, son. Let's have it. The rings. And nose jewels. They got the nose pierced now? Nose jewels. They got the nose pierced. They got the tongues pierced. They got the navels pierced. You got the eyebrows pierced. Your cheek. What's the matter with you? Amen. All that stuff violates the book. All, All right, next question. Uh, Pastor Jennings, yes. as I've read through certain books of the Bible, and I've started from the beginning, Genesis. It seems that there are some uh, points where some things were allowed because of that particular error. That's true. Uh, versus the, uh, the Old Testament and the New Testament. Mm -hmm. One of the things um, was the hoofed animals, about yeah. eating the hoofed animals. Yeah. Um, some of the other things are a bit confusing to me, and I'd like you to perhaps tell us about some of the things that were allowed in one testament because of that time and now it is no longer allowed. Yes, very good. You're dealing with a dietary law. The Old Testament had a dietary law in reference to hoof animals and also uh, species that have fins and certain type of animals like pig or which is most time called swine. Well, those things were forbidden to be eaten under the time of Moses, which had an Old Testament dietary law. That's right. You also got a New Testament dietary law That's in right. the 14th chapter of the book of Romans. In Romans chapter 14 and at verse 1. Now listen at this. Him that is weak in the faith receive ye, and? but not to doubt for disputation. Yes. For one believeth that he may eat all things. Now you got some men, they eat everything. I don't care what it is. Mm -hmm. When they sit at the table, it's like a vacuum. Amen. The moment they sit down, mouth come open. Mm, all the air just come on That's and right. everything goes in. That's right. They don't turn nothing down. Amen. I'm, me personally, I'm a, I'm a very, very, very picky eater. 
I travel in other parts of the world, and uh, most time I come back skinnier than I am before I went there. Hmm. Because there are many things I just don't eat. And it don't violate the Bible, it's just certain things I don't eat. That's right. Now, there are things that they wasn't allowed to eat in the Old Testament, but when it came to the New Testament, those things was no longer forbidden. That's right. Listen at this. For one believeth that he may eat all things. One believeth he can eat all things. Another who is weak eateth herbs. One eat herbs. You have those today. And this scripture is dealing with today. today. Someone that eat herbs who don't eat no meat. Mm -hmm. If you don't want no meat, there's no transgression there. That's right. If you want to just eat herbs, you haven't broken no law. That's right. Uh, but again, let me interject and say this. If certain meats doesn't agree with your body, you don't have to wait to read a scripture or have to wait to hear a voice for heaven to tell you not to eat it. Amen. If you're eating bacon and all of a sudden you see in spots, put the bacon down. <laughs> That's right. Is that right, folks? Amen. You don't need to hear a voice from heaven that says, put down the bacon. Put down those spots telling you, I can't take this. That's right. So, uh, our body many times will tell us that uh, it cannot digest or take or it doesn't agree mm -hmm. with certain things we eat. That's right. So, some eat herbs, mm -hmm. some eat certain meats, meats. some eat certain fish, right. uh, some won't eat catfish. Mm -hmm. I know I won't. Amen. But if you do eat catfish today, there is no violation of the principle of the book. That's right. But uh, like in many Muslims and Jews still go by the Old Testament dietary law. Uh, so therefore, some Muslims won't eat cornbread. You know the jiffy, the jiff, the jiff bread made from the box. Mm -hmm. Some Muslims, and I didn't learn that until I went inside of a Muslim store. Brothers, some brothers from the nation won't eat the cornbread made from the jiff box. Yet, an Orthodox Muslim store will sell the cornbread made from the jiff box. Hmm. So you got ones with bow ties that won't eat it, and you got ones with beers that'll sell it. Hmm. Not that the cornbread violate any law, no. but it's a personal uh, rule that one may have. That's right. So eating bacon don't violate the New Testament law, but it may violate the law of your temple. Right. Because your body may not can't handle it. That's right. Listen at this real good. For one believeth that he may eat all things. And? Another who is weak eateth herbs. Yes. Let not him that eateth. Let not him that eateth. Despise look him. Look down on him. That eateth not. That don't eat it. And let not him which eateth and not. And let not him that eateth not. Judge him that eateth. Do you hear that? For God hath received him. If God, if God received the one they eat pork, then don't you judge him. That's right. The book plainly states, Let not him let that eateth, not him that eateth despise him despise that eateth Despise him that don't eat. Now you got some folks, especially from the south, who eat pig feet, hog mouths, pig ears, mm -hmm. chitlins, and, and some of the ones that don't eat it now, if they didn't have it when it was coming up, they'd be dead. True. So you may now don't eat it, mm -hmm. but don't despise the one that do. That's right. Because you may not eat it now, but you may get into a predicament. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm telling you? Amen. It's like certain things I don't eat. I just don't eat. But if I go to a foreign country, <laughs> now I don't eat monkey. That's without question, I don't eat monkey. But if that's all is there, that's right. and I may hold to my stand, no monkey. <laughs> and uh, by the third or fourth day, me and that monkey may be pals. Amen. This is why I often tell people be slow to say what you never won't do because you may get into a predicament. You can get so down in life, you may find yourself in a trash can. That's right. You may find yourself going into a restaurant trying to get somebody else leftovers. Amen. You may find yourself eating like an animal. 
Amen. Because of your disobedience to God, God may bring you down that low. Is that scripture? Yes. He's done it to a king named Nebuchadnezzar. That's right. Nebuchadnezzar one time was a mighty man of God. And by God's permission, Babylon was built. But this man became self-centered, self-righteous, and arrogant, and was all about himself later on after God blessed him. So besides giving God the honor and the reverence of the prosperity of Babylon, he took the credit for himself and says, Is this not great Babylon that I, I have built? have built he yeah. haven't built nothing that's right and the voice of god spoke from heaven mm -hmm. and stripped nebuchadnezzar from king that's right. drove him out of the kingdom and the book says that he ate grass ox. like an ox that's right his nails grew long and his hairs as the feathers of an animal amen so god can bring you down to such a degree until what you said you never would do, he can force you to do. That's right. Listen. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. All right. And let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth. Yeah. For God hath received him. So if God accept the person that eats something you don't eat, then why should we look down upon him or her? That's right. All right. At verse 6. Now listen good. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord. Yeah. And he that regardeth not the day to the Lord, he doeth not regard it. Uh -huh. He that eateth. He that eateth. Eateth to the Lord. Eateth to the Lord. For he giveth God thanks. He giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not. Come on, son. And giveth God thanks. Let's deal with not offending our brothers or our sisters at what we eat. At verse 15. Get this. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat. Uh-oh. If thy brother if thy be brother grieved, be with, grieved thy meat, with your meat, now walkest thou not charitably. Now, if I invite brothers to my house for dinner, mm -hmm. my wife can cook, and I know my brothers may not eat beef, why would I recommend my wife to cook beef and that's not what they eat? That's right. Then I'm trying to force my personal, not my scriptural, but my personal beliefs upon them that's right. which is wrong that's right but if they don't if they don't eat beef then what i should do out of love and respect is serve what i know they eat it's different if i serve something i don't know they don't eat it amen but if i know i don't eat chinese food that he don't eat chinese food why would i take him to a chinese restaurant that's right and i know he don't eat it mm -hmm. now he may start getting hungry and then may eat it. Mm -hmm. I know from experience. <laughs> I was on the island of Mauritius, which sits east of Madagascar. And I'm not a Chinese food person. But when they picked us up from the airport, our first stop was in a Chinese restaurant. But I didn't want to offend my brothers mm -hmm. when I first went there. So I ate what I knew I can tolerate, uh, like a vegetable roll or an egg roll. Mm -hmm. And then one time we were there last year, and my brother was with me, and he was sitting down ordering what he thought was chicken. And he was just eating it too. This is good stuff, man. He kept telling me, this is good stuff, man. Man, this is good stuff. You want some? I said, no. He said, man, this is good stuff. Try it. You want some? I said, no. So the other brother who was from the island said, I try it. And the brother started laughing. I said, what's funny, brother? He said, what you ordered? It looked like chicken. It feel like chicken. It's no chicken. <laughs> so he asked the brother, what is it? He said, I don't know, but it's not chicken. <laughs> See? And, uh, Right away. <laughs> so sometime I had to suffer, mm -hmm. you know, eating salad for about seven or eight days, salad and french fries in one location, and uh, peanuts and crackers and, <laughs> you know. So the dietary law of the New Testament teaches us not to look down on those who don't eat certain things. That's right. 
Listen at this, read quick. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest thou not charitably. Yeah. Destroy not, destroy not him with thy meat, uh -huh. for whom Christ died. All right. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Why get hung up on meat? And all these other stuff. It is letting you know that the kingdom of God is not in meat and drink. Or drink. But righteousness. It's doing right, living right. And peace. And peace. And joy and in the joy Holy Ghost. With the Holy Ghost. For meat destroy not the work of God. If you eat pork, you won't go to hell over it. That's right. You mean to tell me you somewhere and ain't nothing around but pork? You may survive the first day not eating. Mm -hmm. Second day not eating. Third day not eating. Fourth day not eating. But then all of a sudden you start looking around at them other men and they just keep chewing on them pig legs. Before you know it, you're going to be. That's right. And then when they gone, you're going to be getting them scraps. <laughs> Making that pig leg last a long time. Amen. So yes, the dietary law did change mm -hmm. in the New Testament. It teaches us to be temperate, temperate. in the midst of our eating. Which means don't make your belly your God. That's right. You shouldn't eat until you can't move from the table. <clears throat> you groan. Oh, 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 Lord. Now you want to call on the Lord. That's right. When the Lord then already said, don't make your belly your God. Because if you do, you sin. That's right. One should practice being temperate. Temperate means self-control. Because you may get in a predicament in life, you can't eat as freely that you are used to eating. That's right. But if you have governed yourself and disciplined your eating habit, when that predicament come in your life, you won't sin to get what you want. Mm -hmm. You know, like many of us do when we go to the market and we walk by that big bin of candy <laughs> and just take it and don't pay for it That's right. and just eat it. Thieves. Thieves. That's right. You don't go up to the counter when you check out and say, oh, well, you know, I, I took three pieces of candy. You still be opening it up while you're at the cash register and just eating it <laughs> and then pay for nothing. Amen. The Bible says thou should not steal. That's right. And that covers the smallest thing. That's right. All right. Next question. All right, brother. Go ahead. How you doing, Pastor? Uh, All right, brother. Being in a study group with the, with the uh, Nation of Islam, can you explain uh, Melchizedek since he was a... Uh, had no without mother, without father, and had no beginning or ending because we have a you know thing about uh, the order of Melchizedek. Can you explain to you have a form of order of Melchizedek? No, I have a uh, I'm, I'm still I'm baffled by the order of Melchizedek uh, him himself. Some some of some people in the nation of Islam say he was God. Can you explain that more? And I have one more question. All right, Melchizedek. Let's see what the word or the name Melchizedek means. Book of Hebrews chapter 7. Follow me. And begin reading at verse 1. Yes. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem. Priest of the Most High. Salem means peace. Mm -hmm. King of Salem. Salam. Listen. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, and priest of the Most High God, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. Yes. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. Abraham paid tithe. First being by interpretation. This is what his name means. King of righteousness. There's only one king of righteousness. That's right. The name Melchizedek means king of righteousness. And after that also, after that also, king of Salam, king of Salam and which, king of Salam, which what? Which is king of peace. Which mean king of peace. Without father. If you don't have no father, you always was. Without mother. If you have no mother, that means you're not begotten, nor are you born. Without descent. If you have no descent, that means you have no relatives. Having neither beginning if of days. If you have no beginning, that means you have no birth date, so you are eternal. Nor end of life. And if you have no end of life, that means you never will die. That's God. That's God. Without beginning, without ending, that's God. You're not born, you're not begotten, you haven't been conceived, you always were, and you was not created in darkness either. That's right. You have no beginning of days and you have no end of life. That's who Melchizedek was. Amen. There's only one king of peace. No man is king of peace. No, no. All right, what's the second part of your question, brother? 
Uh, I traveled to see you on the weekends from Baltimore. Yes, sir. Now, I've kind of like lost a lot of ties with my Muslim family now that I'm coming to see you. I'm pretty sure you have. So, <laughs> how do I kind of explain this, the dissension to my family? Well, to explain it to your family, just like were your family always Muslims? They came into Islam at a period of time when they chose to, correct? So, you can approach them from a the perspective to your family, just like all of you came into Islam for a period of time, I decide to walk with holiness for a period of time. Because Islam, I talked to a Muslim many times, Islam brothers. And they often say Islam is the religion of God, without question. Islam is the religion of God, that's what they say. I teach holiness is the religion of God. Now, talking to a Muslim one day, the term Muslim, you know, me one that submits, as you know. So I asked the brother, is God a Muslim? He said, oh yes, brother, without question. He said, Allahu Akbar, all praises, all praises. You know, God is a Muslim. I said, God is a Muslim. He said, for us to be Muslims, God will have to be a Muslim. I said, Muslim mean one, submit? He said, yes. I said, well, if God is a Muslim, then tell me, who does God submit to? That's right. For God will have to submit to no one. No one. God don't submit to anyone. Who hath directed the spirit of the Lord? Nobody. And Isaiah, no Shepherd. one direct God. No. When you are told to submit, that's a direction. That's right. You understand? That's you right. are directed to do. No one directs God. So when I asked the Muslim, uh, who does God submit to? He was like, he had to laugh. <laughs> wow, I, I never thought of that, brother. He said, well, what about this holiness? I said, God, now, well, ask me, is God holy? Please, just ask me. <laughs> because he knows God is holy. That's right. You that say you Baptist, is God Baptist? Hmm. Is God Baptist hope? No. no, no. You that say you African Methodist Episcopal, is God African Methodist Episcopal? No. You that are Freemasons, Prince Hall, Scottish Rite. <laughs> your life is on your hand as a ring. And you use a little lion's claw to raise them from the dead. <laughs> is God a Mason? No. You've been a Pentecostal. Amen. Is God Pentecostal? You that claim you're apostolic. No. Is God apostolic? No. You that are Buddhist. Is God a Buddhist? No. Is God a Catholic? No. Is God a Hindu? No. Let God speak for himself. Let us see Amen. what God, God said he is. In Leviticus chapter 19. And that justify me in being what I am. In Leviticus chapter 19, beginning verse 1. Listen. And the Lord spake unto Moses. And the Lord spake to Moses, or as the Arabs said, to Musa, saying, Speak unto all the congregation. Speak unto all the congregation. Of the children of Israel. Of the children of Israel. And say unto them. Say unto them. Ye shall be holy. Ye shall be. Have Judaism. Ye shall be holy. Judaism. Holy. Mormon. Holy. Muslim. Holy. Baptist. Holy. Non-denominational. Holy. Pentecostal. Holy. Apostolic. Holy. Now, my beef with religion is, if the Lord didn't say he none of this stuff, that's right. Why are you? That's right. Does that make sense? Are you getting me, New Jersey? Amen. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Why are you bragging about being this stuff? My religion is Christianity. What are you bragging about that for? I ain't in the book either. That's right. Well, I thought Christian was in the Bible. Christian is in there, but Christianity is not in there. Amen. Christianity is a religion. Mm -hmm. Christian is a person who's trying to live like Christ, but not even Jesus told you he had a religion called Christianity. That's right. It's just like apostle is in here, mm -hmm. but apostolic supposed to be a religion. Mm -hmm. Apostle is in here, but there's no religion called apostolic. That's right. 
What did Jesus say? What ye, did God say here? Ye shall be holy. Why? Why? For, why? Why? Why should we be holy? For I, the Lord your God, am holy. Amen. God is holy. That's right. So ask yourself, what are you? What are hey, you? you sitting here now, Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Catholic, non-denominational, Mormon, Muslim, uh, Pentecostal, Apostolic, and all this stuff, and That's then right. some crackpot come along and tell you, well, all of us is one family. No, we're not. Oh, no. Doesn't matter what you believe, we won down inside. That's an inside lie. That's right. It does matter what you believe. That's right. You mean to tell me I'm looking at a giraffe? You gonna tell me it's a cat? Amen. We both standing in front of a giraffe. Amen. And you gonna tell me, look, brother, that's a cat from Indonesia. My Lord. The Indonesian cats go that tall. My Lord. Listen, man, that's a giraffe. No, no, brother, that is, that's a cat, brother. Listen, that's a giraffe. Look Amen. how long his neck is. Amen. Boy, that's just an extended cat. <laughs> now. My Lord. Islam came along 572 A.D. Mm -hmm. 572 years after the death of the Messiah, Jesus. Amen. It is said in the religion of Islam that the prophet Muhammad never had direct contact with God. Hmm. That all his lessons came through Gabriel or an Arabic he's called Jibril. In the Quran, the so-called Christian is called the people of the book. Mm -hmm. And said the people, which is the Christian of the book, is the closest people to the Muslim. Mm -hmm. There are more than one sect of Muslims. My brother here was raised in a nation. Mm -hmm. Not even the nation have Quranic teaching about God mm -hmm. that the Muslim had, the Orthodox or the Sunni Muslim. The Sunni Muslim had their belief about God correct in a lot of ways. They believe God is one. God always was. He is the master of creation, Lord of the universe. In the nation, they believe God didn't always exist, but God created himself out of darkness. Mm -hmm. And the darkness of space was equal to the darkness of the womb of the woman. And God started off as a speck of light and he rotated <laughs> in space as the egg rotate in the darkness of the womb. Mm -hmm. They say we don't know how long it took God to create himself. Now that part is right. <laughs> because he never was created. He never was created. They say but God is self-made. God is not self-made. No, no. God always was, always has been. If God, listen, if I make a suit for material, then I got to take the material to make my suit. That's right. So if God creates himself from darkness, that would give darkness more power than God. Because that's saying God had a need of something to withdraw from That's to right. come here. That's right. God don't need nothing to come here. God always was, always has been, always will be. That's right. For thy almighty hand. Listen. In the book of the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 11, and verse 17. What is it? For thy almighty thou hand. Thy almighty hand. That made the world that of made matter. made the world of what? That made the world of matter. Hold it. The nation of Islam is heavy in science. Right. Now, according to the study of science, the darkness of space mm -hmm. consists of matter. That's right. Is that right? That's right. Now. If the darkness of space consists of matter and God created himself from the darkness, from the material of the darkness, right. that would make God consist of nothing but matter. That's right. If you got warm material and you create or make a suit or a dress from the material of the wall, then that would make your dress or suit a wall suit. That's right. So if space consists of matter, according to the study of science, and Islam said that God create himself from the material of darkness that will make God 
nothing more than matter. That's all. Look at what the Bible says about matter. For thy almighty hand. Oh, glory to God. For thy almighty hand. Thy almighty hand. That made the world. That made the world. Of matter without form. Of matter without with, what? Without form. No, he made himself from matter. Without form. He made the world from matter. That made the world of matter he without form. He made the form. world of matter without form. What it not means to send among them a multitude of bears or fierce lions. So not that God created himself. Error. What? In the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 16. What is it? Error. Error. And darkness. And darkness. Had their beginning together with sinners. How do you hear this? Amen. Error? What do you mean? Mistakes? And darkness. And darkness. Had their beginning. Had their beginning. Together. Together. With sinners. With sinners. That's right. The sinner is the darkness. That's right. The sinner is the error. That's so right. when you say God came from the darkness, that's equal to saying that God derived from sin. That's right. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. When you say Go God ahead. came from darkness, Go that's ahead. equal to saying that God come from sin. That's right. That's right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Are you Go listening ahead. to the old man? This then is the message. You're ready, aren't you? Amen. Listen at this. First John chapter 1 and verse 5. This then is the message. Which we have heard which of Which we have heard. And declare unto and you. And declare to you. That God is light. God is is light and in him in him is no darkness there is no darkness at all at all, at all. amen 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 question can't hear you brother judah's microphone back here brother i can't hear him Part, all right yeah, there, there you go. go there's a two-part question from right. brother charlie why do you believe and use the Bible over the Quran and the Torah? Why do I use? I don't use the Bible over the Torah, for the Torah is part of the Bible. The term Torah is simply Hebrew for Old Testament. That's right. That's all. We use all the scripture. Now when it comes to the Quran, I accept what truth is in the Quran. Right. But anything out of any religious book that contradict the scriptures, I won't accept. That's the right. Quran gives me permission to have four wives. God said I only can have one. That's so right. who should I take? Amen. Amen. The Quran gives me permission to have four wives if I can treat them all equally. That's right. But God says from the beginning, God so, says, That's right. Who outweighs Muhammad? Amen. Who outweighs Muhammad? Who outweighs Moses? God outweighs all the prophets. That's right. So, yes, we don't exclude the Torah. The term Torah is simply Hebrew for, for Old Testament. Old Testament. We use the Old Testament and the New Testament, and I accept what truth that comes from the Quran that doesn't contradict the book of Scripture. That's it. Yes, brother. The second part, why would God use Constantine to put the Bible together if Constantine believes in Christianity and Christianity is not in the Bible? <laughs> Using a man, number one, I never said that God used no, he never said Constantine. No, you never did say that. The order of the scriptures, mm -hmm. Constantine and his people put them in a certain order. Mm -hmm. Because they put them in a certain order doesn't take away from the truth. That's right. To better, let me put it more harsh. That's right. If a faggot <laughs> get up here and read from this book, Amen. he may be a faggot, but it don't take from the truth of the book. That's right. So if Constantine and his cronies put books together, hmm. I don't take from the truth. No more than Judas walk with Jesus, stop Jesus from being the Messiah. That's right. So Constantine don't have nothing to do with the truth. No. Constantine has nothing to do with the contents of the book. Right. All Constantine and the others did was set scriptures in a certain order. 
That's it. And then they tried to take it upon themselves to exclude mm -hmm. certain scriptures. That's right. We don't exclude the scriptures whatsoever. whatsoever. So the scriptures was here long before Constantine ever was born. Amen. Go ahead, brother. Yeah. Um, when did mixed breeding start? The brother asked, when did mixed breeding start? How old is that little fella? Ten. Ten. When did mixed breeding start? Didn't start today. Mixed breeding is an old thing. You ever heard of a man named Noah, young man? Mixed breeding starred in the days of Noah. God instructed Noah, the son of Lamech, to build an ark. And when Noah was building this ark, before the ark was even built, before the commission went out, mm -hmm. man was resorting to every method and every tactic to provoke God. That's right. And mixed breeding was one of the methods that man used to make God angry. That's Notice right. the book of Jasher. In the book of Jasher, chapter 4, we'll begin in verse 17. Listen. And every man made unto himself a god. Yeah. And they robbed and plundered every man, his neighbor, as well as his relatives. Uh -huh. And they corrupted the earth, and the earth was filled with violence. Yes. And their judges and rulers went to the daughters of men and took their wives by force. They took their wives by force. From their husbands, according to their choice. Yes. And the sons of men in those days took from the cattle of the earth. The sons of men. And those days took from the cattle of the earth the beast of the field, the beast of the field, and the fowls of the air, and the fowls of the air, and taught the mixture and of animals, taught the mixture of animals of one species of with one the other, species with the other, in order therewith, in order therewith to provoke the Lord. That's where misbreeding began back in the days of Noah. Amen. The purpose was to provoke God and to make God angry. That's right. Over here. Can't hear you. All right. This question says, uh, I'm a tither, but sometimes do not have 10% or being on a fixed income, don't pay the 10%. Am I violating the laws of God concerning tithing if I don't pay the 10%? The Bible says exact no more than what's appointed you. If God put an order of a tenth of all thine spoil, then I don't have the right to tell you to give less. Right. The law of God says a tenth of all thine spoil, and the Bible says be obedient in all things but if you don't have it you can't pay what you don't have neither can you give what you don't have that's right that's just common sense if i don't have it i can't give it if i have it then i can be obedient and give it because whatever i have in life i can't get it unless god give it to me that's true and if i don't give god what he want that makes me a robber right. well i don't believe i'm robbing god you may not believe you're robbing when you're breaking that man's house but when you go in jail you become educated right away that's right so if we go in hell for robbing God, education will hit us right away. That's right. All right. Let's get the sister over here. Hello. Okay. I um, purchased one of your tapes with the um, speaking with you and the brothers from the Muslim community. And one of the Muslim speakers said that he believed that there was corruption in the Quran and the Bible. I just wanted you to speak on his taking that there was corruption in the Bible because I do hear that a lot and oh yes I don't know whether I mean I believe the Bible no doubt but there are a lot of people that try to use that to deter you from you know using the scriptures to live your life so I want to know your take on that yes I hear that all the time uh, the Bible has been discredited more than any book in the world because the Bible is the only book out of all religions that's against people's deeds, against people's flesh, against people's wants, against people's will. That's right. But let's see. Now, if the Bible was corrupt, the only time a thing is corrupt is when a man do it on his own. That's right. And God have nothing to do with what's being done. That's right. First, let's see, does man have anything personally to do with writing the divine scriptures of truth. Listen at this in the book of Se Peter. Second Peter chapter 1 and begin reading in verse 20. Let's move quick. Knowing this first that no prophecy Knowing of the this, scripture. That no prophecy of the scripture. Is of any private interpretation. Is of anybody personal interpretation or personal view. 
For the prophecy came not in old time the by the will of man. Prophecy didn't come in old time by man's will, by man's opinion, by man's thought. But holy men of God. What kind? Holy men of God. What kind? Holy men. That means the men that spake and the man that wrote mm -hmm. was divinely inspired and divinely taught and divinely guided. But holy men of God speak. As they were what? As they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So if God, who is the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit, guided these men and God is responsible for the contents of the book, I have no more sense, better sense than to respect and to honor and to reverence the contents of the book. That's the right. reason why many people think some scriptures are contradicting another scripture is because of their lack of understanding of the book. That's right. So right away, they, right away they say, uh, well, that, that Bible contradicted, that verse contradict that. No, no, a good example. I preach there's one God and none other but he. People write me from around the world and say, what about Genesis 126? Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Who was the us? Who was the our? They overlook verse 27, which is right under verse 26, Gosh. that clearly clarifies wow. verse 26. That plainly says, so God, G-O-D, made man. In his own image, in the image of God, created he him. So the reason why people lack understanding or think scriptures contradict the other is because of their lack of understanding of the book. This Bible is divinely inspired, divinely true, and it is the strongest force that is in this earth today. That's why if you evaluate practically all of these religions that have some type of religious book, read what they have. They take bits and pieces from the Bible That's right. to formulate their own religion. Because every religion got to have a book. That's right. Every religion got to have some type of book. Mm -hmm. So what man do? He go get what he want from the Bible and get his idea and formulate a book. Mm -hmm. And he'll get a lot of it from the book of truth that he claim he don't believe. That's right. Yes, brother. All right, my question is about what you said earlier about how we can have riches. When I read in uh, Matthew 6, 19, he say, Lay not yourself treasures upon the earth. Then in 21, he said, For where your treasures, there is your heart will be also. Yeah. And then he says again in Matthew 19, 23, and 24. I mean, yeah, 23 and 24. He says, uh, Verily I say unto you that a rich man shall, ain't, he ain't getting in the, the, the kingdom of heaven. That's like sticking a camel through the, the eye of a needle. Can you explain that? Let's break that down. Matthew chapter 19, and begin at verse 23. Listen. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you that a rich man shall hardly enter. He didn't in. say he can get in. No. Hardly enter. Hardly. Hardly. I mean, it will be hard for him That's to right. get in. And you know why? Because that rich man is so caught up in his money. Mm -hmm. There are many people that believe certain things in the Bible until going to be for a rich man to be saved because he's so caught up in his riches and his wealth, he think he's something now. It is easier for a camel to go through so the eye of a needle. So keep looking at his uh, bank books and keep looking at this, and he just love it because he got money. He's too foolish and too ignorant to realize that he's so caught up. When your heart is getting in it, proof that your heart become in it because now you'll find yourself, you're not in church, don't want to be in church that much, you don't even care about coming to church that much. You used to be prayerful, you're not. You used to fast, you don't. In fact, it's days that you don't even have to work. But because so much money coming in, you refuse to pass up that money because you love those doles more than you love God. That's right. And God will let you get to a certain point in life and then strip you naked. That's right. The Bible says whatsoever things are written aforetime time are written for our learning. The problem with many of us, we read, but we don't learn nothing. Amen. So some of us will learn the hard way yeah. by suffering what many of those suffered in the book. That's right. So when the Bible says, well, your treasure is there, will your heart be also? If I value what I have in this life more in God, then I would give myself over to it more than I will God. That's, it. That's why you find when these people are so crazy about money, they don't want to give God no time. You're going to be at church. I ain't got no time to go to church, man. <laughs> but you ain't got to work tonight. I know. But that money, that money. That's right. I, it's just that money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That money going to be a witness against yeah, you. Witness against you. All right. Good afternoon. 
My question deals with death. Um, I know it says to be, you know, absent. How does scripture go? Absent from the body and present with the Presence Lord. Presence of the Lord, yes. So when you do die, what happens? And how is that connected to Judgment Day? Are we, abs are we just hanging up in somewhere and we have to wait a thousand years before judgment comes before? What happens? Can you explain what that? What happens when you die? Right. Mm -hmm. Excellent question. Amen. Ecclesiastes. In the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12 mm -hmm. and verse 7. The scriptures have all your answers in it. That's Come on. Right. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. Now when you die, I know many of you say your mama's in heaven. No, she ain't. <laughs> your mama's in the ground. If you don't believe me, go dig. That's right. Your mama, your daddy, your husband, your wife, your children, when you die, your mama ain't in heaven. No. That body's in the ground. Now the dust go back to dust. Then shall the dust then return shall to the, the dust earth return to the earth as it was. Where it come from? And the spirit, the spirit shall return to God. The spirit is God. what's in the body. The That's actual right. person or the real person is not what you see. That's right. The real person is the unseen. Mm -hmm. The real person is what's in the temple, in the structure, in this earthly tabernacle. That's right. For the real person is the body. Give chapter and verse again. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12 and verse 7. Yes. Then shall the dust return to the then earth as it was. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was or where it came from and the spirit and the spirit shall return unto it returns God returns to God who gave it now hold it now many would say well if it returns to God Pastor Dennis it means it goes to heaven no because God is not just in heaven That's right. God is higher than heaven the book says deeper than hell broader than the sea and longer than the earth yeah. God is everywhere yeah. So when the spirit of a man come out that body, when it goes to God, meaning it goes in the presence of God. That's right. That's where it goes, in the presence of God. It ain't going up into heaven because no one have ascended up into heaven at any, at time, any time, according to the scripture, but he that came down. Yeah, that's right. So it goes in the presence of God and mm -hmm. God fulfilled heaven and earth alone. And that spirit must wait until the time of judgment. Judgment is an appointed time. Mm -hmm. It is a time that is to come that have not came yet. Right. A few more questions, then we're quick because we're on a time. This question is from Brother Will. Where can we find a Bible that has all the books in it? Well, we're getting it prepared for you now. Mm -hmm. We're getting it all prepared for you now. We're putting it all together so that way everybody can have it. And once we're done, you'll see it on telecast. We'll announce it over the telecast where you can order it and you'll be able to get it. All right? All right, come on. I noticed a lot of pastors, when Jesus told Lazarus to come forth, they say he hopped out, but the Bible says said he came forth. They didn't say nothing about no hopping, but they say he hopped out. Can you explain that? I, I, I can't get that. He said when the, when the scriptures talk about when Lazarus came forth, a lot of preachers teach that he hopped out. And the scriptures say <laughs> that he came forth. They you just explain? lied. They just, uh, Lazarus hopped out. <laughs> they just lied. They pre they, a lot of times these men sit in seminary school so long, they just toss that type of theology. Uh, they use theology and integrate it in many of their homemade sermons and homemade messages. Lazarus hopped out. The book <laughs> says he hopped out of nothing. No. All that stuff is homemade. That's all. All right, I got time for a few more questions, then we're going to have to quit. Yes, brother. This, script, uh, this question is, what do you need to do to be saved? How do you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost? Do you tarry or pray? Uh, and if you're full with sin, um, she put, do you know, of, or she put, a, he put, do you know of a church in Camden that teaches like you do? Do you welcome new members? I don't know of no church in Camden that preach what we preach. Amen. Because if it was, you wouldn't be here now. <laughs> That's right. Why you think I want to open up one here? That's right. That's what we want to do. Amen. I don't know of no preacher that stand for what we stand for. I don't know none Amen. down here in Camden. 
they got something wrong or they preaching something wrong or they preaching a lie somewhere. That's right. And it's, I'm talking about a church that preached nothing but the Bible. Not a preacher that get up and write his sermon. Mm -hmm. Not a preacher that pre-planned his sermon. Not a preacher that got to pre-plan a sermon Saturday night so he can have it all together by Sunday. Amen. No! Oh, no. I don't pre-plan nothing. Oh, I ain't no. never planned a sermon. I don't have nothing written out. No. Never been to Bible school or seminary school since I've been born. And I've been on this earth for 43 years. <laughs> never. Never. The Bible says, he whom God has sent speak the words of God. And these men here in Camden who says they are sent of God, if God sent you of a truth, then none of your message should be in contradiction of God. That's right. How can God send you to preach from the book and yet your message contradict the book? Amen. How would you preach going to contradict the book and you're going to tell the people to believe the book and your sermon contradicted? No, it don't work that way. That's right. So no, I haven't met none of the preachers in Camden that believe this or stand they some of them preach some of it some of it and most times they preach what don't what don't hurt you mm -hmm. the lord is my shepherd i shall not want or they preach songs amazing grace <laughs> how sweet the sound save a wretch like me That's right. I, I once was lost and he's still lost <laughs> <laughs> well, this is just the condition that it's in and I know the preachers, they, they, they don't want me here. They don't want us in town. They don't even want a church here. I was told when the Hebrew Israelites left out of here last night, they were standing outside yelling. This, we don't want him here. Camden don't need him. They don't need that junk here. Well, I'm here and there's nothing nobody can do about it. Amen. And I mean nobody. Amen. We're in town. Nobody's tough enough or bad enough to run me out That's you right. can't make me run out you can't make me rush out amen. i'm here and ain't nothing you can do about it if you don't like it tough amen i don't move from threats i'm not intimidated by nobody born on the planet that's right i'm not intimidated by nobody that's right. if your black is ass for white as snow yellow as butter clear as water I ain't intimidated by nobody living amen i was made a preacher that's right i was made what i am hallelujah glory to right. god i was made a preacher amen I'm not trying to be a preacher. I was made what I am. That's right. I'm not trying to get a sermon. I was made what I am. Amen. I didn't study to be a preacher. Go ahead. I was made what I am. Go ahead. If God made you, Amen. you're well made. That's right. These men prove they're not made. All you got to do is throw them money and they sell out on you. That's right. These men ain't nothing but a sellout. Amen. Yes. We're looking to open up the Camden Temple. Put something good in here. Amen. Cause a lot of ruckus. Amen. That way the folks can come out of the false churches, can come out of these false teachings. The young men can come off the corner and get all the cigarettes and dope out of their system. I let holiness clean them up. That's right. I got time for two more questions and that's it. Question about death. Great, Pastor Jones. Yes, sir. Pertaining to death, well, I understand there's two classes of people going to be saved, the righteous and the holy. Right. What separates those two, one has the Holy Ghost, one didn't receive the Holy Ghost, but they lived all they knew according to the scripture. All right. How does that come into play with the white throne judgment? Will the holy and the, the righteous receive this white throne judgment? The white throne of judgment, as it is called. First and foremost, the white throne of judgment is not for the holy. All right. That's right. Because the book tells us, judge yourself when? Now. Here, right here. That ye be not, not judged. judged. Be not judged when? In judgment. judgment. Right. So you judge yourself now that you don't be judged. The second resurrection is where the two class of people will be. Mm -hmm. Because the book says, whoever is not found no. written. written. That's right. Whoever is not found written. They cannot be talking about the holy because blessing the holy is he that have fought part in the first resurrection the first which is the church then that are baptized in the name of jesus christ had the baptism of the holy ghost is already resurrected first right second resurrection you have left in the earth after the holy is taken up the only ones you got left are wicked 
and those that's trying to do right that never had the Holy Ghost. All right. So then they come along in a second resurrection. Bible says with a second death have no power. 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 What do you mean? If they have no power, nobody that will stand in there will have the power of God in them. Mm -hmm. Meaning no one that's standing in the second resurrection will have the Holy Ghost. The power of God is the Holy Ghost. So no one that's standing there will have the Holy Ghost in them. That's right. But there will be two classes of people. Righteous and filthy. John says this. He that is filthy, that let him be filthy, filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. So Peter said, if the righteous scarcely be saved, scarcely be saved, scarcely get in. Well, in order for the righteous to get in, they got to be found written in the book of life. What do righteous mean? That mean a man and a woman that lived all they know to do that was right, even if they didn't hear all the truth, what they heard. They strive to live by that. All oh, what they heard. That's why the righteous scarcely make it. Because many won't live all they heard. Right. So because of that, some will be lost. So whoever's found written in the book, they have got a chance to escape the hell fire. Those that are not found That's right. in the book, they are the ones that will be cast. That's why he separates wheat from tares. And then once the separation of the righteous and the wicked take place, the righteous comes with the holy. Mm -hmm. This is why, notice, he says, blessed and holy is he to have part in the first resurrection. But then later on he said, I go to prepare a place that where I am you may be also. And then Peter says, he's going to create a new heaven and a new earth, wherein dwell of who? Righteousness. So that means the righteous will dwell with the holy in the new city called Jerusalem. That's right. John said, I saw a new Jerusalem prepared as a bride adorned for her husband come down from God out of heaven. He said, and I saw the city, it lie a full square. The height, the breadth, and the length thereof was equal. One part with 12,000 furlongs and another part with 144 cubits. That's right. He said, the city had no need of the light of the sun nor of the moon. He said, because God did light up the city. So the righteous will stand with the holy, which is the church. Go ahead. Glory to God. Amen. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. All right. One more. Where is it? Let me get someone I didn't get. Go ahead, brother. Give him the microphone, brother, because I can't hear him. Sure. In the city of Candom, you know that we have a very high percentage rate of men who are having addiction. Yes, sir. Alcoholism and homelessness. Yes, sir. The church have made an intent to help in this area, but have been very unsuccessful. If you had an opportunity or a chance, what would you do to reach the men to bring them back to their right state of mind? The one of the problems that the church have made mistake of that they thought would help them. They thought one way of helping them was just building basketball courts, which would just give them a place to hang out. You need a good constructive program that can deal with the men and the women that have these problems one-on-one. -on -one. And this program is beyond getting them in a room saying their name. My name is Bill. I've been clean for three days. The problem that the church has been lacking They've been having programs like this, and they wonder why it don't work. They don't include God in the program. That's right. So you need something on the inside mm -hmm. to kill the appetite. I can get you in a group and sit around and talk about, oh, my problem with drugs, my addiction. Then you walk around and feel pitiful and sorry. No. You need God. And the only thing that's going to truly break that habit, you must be taught how to fast. You must be taught how to pray. And you got to be made a soldier. A soldier is one that fight against his will and the fight against his will begins in here you first got to reconstruct redevelop recreate the mentality of that man and of that woman because I get you in a room and all you do is talk if your mind don't change your habit won't change that's right so my job first and foremost I got to reconstruct that mind that crackhead that's right it's called a crack head because the narcotics get in their brain and it separates its thinking ability. Mm -hmm. Cracks. Mess you, up. Mess you up. So God's got to kill your appetite. Yeah. 
change your mind and then you got to work on your heart because your mind your mind is attached to the drug and your heart is emotionally attached that's why some say i love it hmm. i love it mm -hmm. so now we got to work with the mind and got to work with the heart and you know what we're working with a spirit that's right it's a spirit that get in these people. That's right. That drives them to the bottom. Amen. Why do you think a state store says wine and what? Spirits. Wine and what? Spirits. What spirit? It's the spirit of God in there. No. It's the spirit of the devil that's in them. That's right. What make that man or woman stay on alcohol, drugs, and it's the spirit of the devil mm -hmm. that's in him, that's in her, that's help driving the force. Mm -hmm sitting around a circle talking never do it no. they need god get in there it's just like you can have a car full of gas but you need that battery to get it jumping that's right now you got the community things and this that and the other but what the community is lacking is god yeah. the churches ain't doing nothing they're not churches they're just a building with a steeple that's right you need god's church that's it. I got many men and women follow me that are ex-drug dealers, used to be crackheads, used to be alcoholics, used to be in the prison, used to be murderers, used to be gangbangers, used to be prostitutes, used to be. Amen. And with this hard gospel, we'll keep you or used to be. That's right. So this is what we want to do for Camden. Make it a used to be. Amen. And a no more. No more. Bring the crackhead. Bring the big guzzler. That's right. We're going to deal with you hard like boot camp. That's right. Not sit in a circle. My name is Jeffrey. Jeffrey, how long you be clean? No. <laughs> well, I'm going to jump on Jeffrey with all scripture. Amen. Not going to pacify him. Amen. Not going to pacify him and tell him it's all right. It isn't all right. That's right. And Jeffrey got to be able to see what he's doing is killing himself. And to get him to stop, he got to love himself. Amen. You got to love yourself enough not to kill your own self. That's right. I can show my love to you, but if you don't love yourself, what I'm telling you won't even help you at all. Amen. My God, and when you don't want to go to hell, I guarantee you'll start loving yourself. Hmm. Huh? That's right. So uh, believe me, it's a big plan hmm. that we got for Camden. It's a scriptural plan, That's right. not a government plan. That's right. The government has failed America, didn't it? Amen. Religion has failed. So we might as well go back to the drawing board and try God. Right. That's right. Let's go to the original source and try God. Amen. Thank you for listening, Camden, New Jersey. Now, brothers and sisters, all of you that are here in Camden that's not saved or believe you're saved, the way you truly save a born again, you got to repent of your sins. Repenting is when you have remorse for all the wrong you've done. And you must be physically baptized. Your whole, water, your whole body go down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Not Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Not bow your head and raise your hands and accept Christ as your personal Savior. Not pray some cheap sinner's prayer. Not join nobody's church. The way to be born again is by scriptural law. You must be baptized in water in the name of of Jesus Christ. Camden, do you want to get yourself right? Do you want to get yourself right? How many here want to obey God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ? Stand on your feet so I can see you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. All praises are due. That's good, isn't it? Uh, secretaries, you secretary that have the book, please get each individual name. Please quickly get their name and whatnot and address so we can contact these people and make arrangements. You may be seated and baptize them. Please, let's move quick. I need more than one secretary with the book. And when they come to you, raise your hand up so they can know who you are. They can take your name and phone number so we can get these brothers and these sisters baptized. Uh, we want to work on, I really want to work on Camden hard. I mean work on Camden hard because Camden is like Zulu Nation down here. 
The Hebrew Israelites already expressed they don't want me here. I know the nation of Islam don't want me here. I caught them over the radio down here barking about me. This man, Gino Jin, is coming down here. Yeah, he had that. Mr. Harry knocks up in the pulpit. He would never find Harry up in our pulpit. Well, if the house of God is the truth, that's where everybody should be. So, uh, whether you want us here or not, we're going to come down here and work, work, work. But until we open up a temple here, Philadelphia is just a toss of stone away, isn't it? So don't be lazy. Make your way to Frankfurt Avenue so you can keep getting this good grub in you. If you got that problem of smoking and drinking and, bro and drug addiction, you need to be around something hardcore. And the truth of God is the hardest core stuff you can ever get. So we're going to work. God willing to try to find a place down here in Camden to get you in. Set up a temple where we can get your soul fed and then you can come out of this church that's feeding you nothing but garbage. Please, uh, secretaries, let's work quick. Uh, so those of you that want to be baptized, get their names, because we got to make arrangements to get all of them baptized uh, before they leave. Please get them before they leave. Uh, if you got an extra book, please, so one sister don't have to do it. It kind of kills time. All right? Who give me the correct time, brother? 321. We thank you, Camden, New Jersey, for being here for these two days. We thank you for being faithful, of being here. We thank you for having us, because if you wouldn't have us, I would have came anyway. <laughs> We're being Philadelphia. Philadelphia session starts tonight at 6 o'clock. So, Camden, you're welcome to drive across the bridge and be with us in Philadelphia tonight at 6. God willing, uh, we may be back in Camden later on this year. To start back working on you some more. So keep watching the telecast. My young men that love to stand out in the hood and do whatever it is you do, we're working on you too. Yeah, we're not going to spare you either. We're going to work on you. That way you can work on your household, work on your family, because today the families need to be one. The family structure of the homes of America is practically falling apart. Husband doing one thing, wife doing one thing, and the children want to do something else. So our objective, our aim, is to push all the people towards God, not away from God, but towards God, to unify your mind, change your way of thinking. Let the message cause you to be ashamed about your sins and about your conduct, because if you're not ashamed, you won't make no change. Is that right? Keep watching the telecast. There's various events coming up in different parts of North Carolina and South Carolina. You're welcome. You got the men's convention coming up uh, in about two weeks in Florence, South Carolina. You have the international convocation coming up in the month of November during the Thanksgiving week in uh, Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. You have, we'll be in Baltimore, Maryland, two weeks back to back, God willing. In September, we, we started to work down there, had a got a beautiful size following down there in Baltimore. So we go from state to state, place to place, building, working. This is what we do. We build and work. And all of you that are sincere and want to be right, don't mind striving to make a change. Don't mind striving to get yourselves right. So we're going to get ready to close with prayer. But if you, if the secretaries or the sisters in the aisle that are ushers, if they haven't got your name, you that want to be baptized, to be sure they don't overlook you, go to them. Give them your name and phone number and address so they can contact you in the rain. In fact, you can be baptized this evening. We can baptize you in Philadelphia this evening. If you're not too lazy to go across that bridge, we have baptized you this evening. In fact, we ain't got to wait the evening. You can leave here and go straight to the Philadelphia headquarters church. We have baptized you in the next 30 minutes or hour. If you want it, you can have it. It's open to you now. It's open to you now. You can be in Philadelphia uh, right from here. You can get your baptism in the name of Jesus Christ today. Is that all right? You don't want to be baptized. Is that all right? Good. All right. So we'll get that done, God willing, soon as possible. Let us all stand, brothers and sisters. Let's all close out with a prayer. Eternal God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, the God of the prophets and the God of the apostles, we thank you for your divine wisdom. 
your perfect understanding, your infallible knowledge of all things. We thank you for your in-depth truth that you revealed to your servants, the prophets, and the revelation that you have given to your servants, the apostles. We can never thank you enough for the brothers and sisters that are here in Camden, New Jersey. We thank you for giving them an open heart and open ears to be able to hear and receive the message of truth. Eternal God, you know our desire. Grant us our petition to open up a temple in this city. Give us victory in this city that the young, middle-aged, and old may come and hear the divine laws of God, that their mind might change, their heart might change, and their ways may change, that their entire conduct may please you. Look on those that want to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Eternal God, we thank you for them accepting the message of truth. Keep them with the mind of want to obey your divine law. Them that haven't been baptized, give them a mind to receive the things of God, that they too one day may submit to your divine law and give up their own will and submit to your divine will. We thank you for your wisdom. We thank you for your knowledge. We thank you for the way of holiness. Eternal God, as we depart this place, protect us as we go back to our separate places. Bless the service this evening in Philadelphia that the souls may come again to hear the message of truth. Knowing your coming is near, knowing the end of creation is near. Help us to better ourselves by obeying your divine law. We thank you for all things, these blessings we ask. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the one God, let the brothers and sisters say, Amen. Amen. Chair, brother.